business, different editions of new products, different vision, different outlook, what was happening in the market. Today we have a very specific agenda so that we know that whatever we learned yesterday and what we want our business to go to the next level is through this program we intend to help you. Two sessions we are going to talk today. One is on the estate planning and second is on the WhatsApp API. First session will be taken by Mr. Deepak Jain, who is a co-founder and a director of Next Gen Estate Planning and also he is a co-founder and director of American Academy. He is one of the likely person who has given knowledge to more than 50,000 mutual fund distributors till date in India in the last four years. He is a very renowned, you know, uh, I would say financial guru and he also works very closely for the business coaching for various MFDs in India. So telling you today about the estate planning, this topic is future proofing with MFDs with the power of estate planning. Currently today what we are doing, we are selling mostly the mutual fund as a single product and some of us are also offering insurance. We are going to talk today how estate planning can help you to grow your business from mutual fund, how you, are, uh, you can empower your existing investors with estate planning and how as a mutual fund distributor you can add this to your business, increase your revenue, how you can help your investors with the estate planning. And the beauty of this product is that you need to approach the same existing clients and not the new clients who start with the business. And once you have your hands on, you can always have the new clients for the acquisition and growing of your business. Now I would like to call upon Mr. Deepak Jain to enlighten us today with the power of estate planning and future proofing the MLBs and helping them to grow their business with the estate planning. Thank you so much. Because whatever he has, you might think it is less. But for him, that is what he has. That's only what he has. So it is not for classes. It's, it's a big myth that this is only for classes. I would rather say it's more important for masses than classes. Because a person who has a net worth of say less than a crore rupees, their family is much more at risk than a person having 100 crore rupees net worth. They would somehow live, survive. But this person is totally dependent on that money what they what their parents would give to them for their survival. Right? Okay. So we come to a basic question, what makes up your estate? Because whenever I start estate planning session, first thing I have to tell people, not you, common people, that this is not about real estate. But many people think I will be talking about real estate. Because this word estate is common between real estate and estate planning. So what makes up your estate? What is actually your estate? So what is your estate? Anything you own or anything you will own after your death forms a part of your estate. Everything which you own today is your estate. And everything which you will own on the date of your death, that is also your estate. And everything which you will own after your death is also part of your estate. But my question to you here is very different. My question to you is, do you know what do you own today? If I give you a piece of paper and I ask you to write the name of all your assets on a piece of paper, would you be able to create a complete list? So how many of you know how, what I know own today? Okay, all of you? Actually. So let me first prove to you that you do not know what you own to do. Right? And I'll give you an example. There was a businessman. All of you are a businessman? All of you are into business? He gave his business to his elder son through his will. And post his death, his elder son inherited this business of his. But because he did nothing, his younger son got hold of his mobile phone number and email id now what will happen business goes to the elder son mobile phone number and email id goes to the younger son now what will happen either both the brothers will start fighting or business would start transferring from the elder to the younger yes and both of this this, this person did not want 
my question to you is when i ask you to make your will how many of you would write in that will that post my death my mobile phone number goes to this person my email id goes to this person is your mobile phone number an asset or not in your business it is the biggest asset what is an asset anything and everything that can be converted into money is an asset anything and everything that can be converted into money is an asset right and this phone number is it an asset does it give you money yes no the best example of an asset i heard in a conference in chandigarh so i was doing this retired army couple conference in chandigarh where i just told them what is an asset and we were telling them how to plan their finances post retirement then i asked them give me some examples of assets people started giving me all sorts of answers some were saying my land is an asset my house is an asset life insurance policy is an asset ppf account is an asset in the end i asked a old lady sitting at the back i asked her ma'am what is an asset for you she said my husband is an asset i said why she said i can convert him into money any time i want <laughs> right the so people have different notions about asset but what is an asset what can be converted into money and in today's world a normal person has four types of assets first is real assets land building machinery jewelry gadgets second is financial assets shares mutual fund bank account balances right and and mutual uh, other things life insurance policies and other thing third which are becoming very very important today they are called digital assets mobile phone number email id website url domain hosting credit card points miles on a airline what are these are they not assets and last is intangible assets your trademarks your reputation your goodwill no your relationships your biggest asset your biggest asset client relationships no that's your biggest asset is it not an asset so what what's what your estate some total of your physical financial digital and intangible asset is your estate the definition says everything which you own pre death is your estate but it also says everything which you will own after your death is also part of your estate what are things which you might own after your death apart from a insurance policy claim which you already know what are some things which you might own after your death apart from a insurance policy claim which you already know let let me let me give you an example suppose you were traveling in that malaysian aircraft that crashed and government of malaysia pays a claim of 5 crore rupees post your death who owns this 5 crore rupees who is the owner not legal heirs not nominees the real owner of this money is the person who died the person who was traveling because this person gave up his life for this money he is the real owner and this money belongs to him it is part of his or her estate and this person could have given away this money while he was alive and you can ask me how can i ever give away money which i never ever know i will ever own how can i ever give away money which i never ever know i will ever own so if you get your will made by a good lawyer and please underline the word good lawyer lawyer and good right they always add a clause to that will which is called residual clause or the remainder clause which basically says if i ever own anything which is not mentioned in the will it will go to these people in these proportion it's called residual beneficiary residual clause and sometimes the residue is bigger than the main it can so happen 
it can so happen do you understand what is your estate all of you have a estate right and what is estate planning estate planning is a systematic plan to transfer your estate as per your wishes and desires when you systematically plan how will be my estate transferred after me as per my wishes and desires that plan is called estate plan now some questions for you to find out whether you need estate planning or not right because these are these, your clients would say i don't need estate planning right i am too young to do estate planning or i don't have anything to do estate planning so you need to ask them some questions and i'll be asking the same questions to you right each of my question has only two possible answers a yes or a no right i want each one of you to answer if your answer is yes to my question you will give me a thumbs up otherwise you will give me a thumbs down all of you are with me if the answer is yes i want this to happen yes it would be good if this happens yes i would ensure that this happens you will give me a thumbs up otherwise you will give me a thumbs down all of you are with me at the last everybody so my first question to you is do you want to do you want to retain control over your property while you are alive do you want to have full control over your property while you are alive yes. how many of you want to retain control over your property while you are alive yes. no yes. yes all of us should retain control over our property while we are alive why because this control of yours over your property ensures your financial security and people who give up this control while they are alive become the singhanias of this world all of you have heard the raymond case yes, father gave up his shares worth then 1000 crore rupees then 1000 crore rupees to his son and today father is where on the road if you do not want to end up on the road never ever leave control over your property while you are alive my biggest message to all of you is love everybody in this world love everybody in this world but not more than yourself <laughs> love yourself the most people who cannot take care of themselves cannot take care of anybody in this world that's the biggest truth be selfish be selfish it's very important okay second question is do you want to take care of yourself and your loved ones in case you are disabled suppose you are in coma you are paralytic you are mentally unsound would you still like to take care of yourself and your loved ones yes. at least financially if not physically yes. right all of you want to do that now comes my third and the most important question in this series of question and that is do you want to give what you want to whom you want the way you want and when you want after your death yes, yes. do you want that your property after your death only goes to people you want it to go yes. only at the time you want it to go yes. only in the manner and mode you want it to go and only in the amount and proportion you want it to go that means you not only want to keep control over your property while you are alive you want to maintain that control even after you are dead while alive you want control after death also control and the last 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 question in this series of question is do you want to save every last professional fees and transfer cost related to transfer of your wealth do you want that this process of transfer of wealth from you to your next generation is very easy for the next generation can you ask the audience to mute their cell phones okay please mute your cell phone others are getting disturbed put it on the airplane mode you can still click photographs right okay thank you so do you want that this process of transfer of wealth from you to your next generation is very easy for the next generation do you want your next generation to easily and peacefully inherit your wealth all of you want to do that 
Now, how many of you have answered these four questions as yes? Just raise your hands. How many of you have answered these four questions as yes? Because if you have answered them yes, then you need estate planning. If you answered these four questions as yes, then you need estate planning. Because estate planning is the only way to ensure that the answers to these four questions is yes for you and your next generation. And if I ask these four questions to your clients, how many of them would say yes? So that means all of them require a statement. So that should be out of your mind that it is not required by some, it's required by only few. It is required by everyone. What I told estate is physical assets, financial assets, digital assets and intangible assets for all. Now, now I will give you some examples and you tell me whether you relate to them or not. Right? And these are real examples which I have faced, situations which I have faced while doing estate planning for various families. Right? Situation 1. The first situation is there is this person called Rajesh Jain. He has three sons and two daughters. He has three sons and two daughters. Rajesh Jain stayed with his two sons in the house which is in his name. Right? Now, some problem. Just a minute. Due to recent run in property prices, House is now worth over 3 crores. Rajesh Jain is constantly postponing his decision to do estate planning. At least make a will. He thought there is ample time and remained ignorant towards the importance of estate planning. Now after his death, his property has become disputed since neither his two daughters nor his one son who was staying away from his parent are willing to let go their share in the property. Earlier daughters did not have a share in parents' property, but however after the recent changes in 2005 in the Hindu Succession Act, they have equal share in the property. Right? The condition of house is not good. Mr. Rajesh and two daughters and his third son are looking forward to a time when they can be, the house will become habitable so they, they can occupy a portion of the house. The two brothers in this house do not have enough cash to buy the sisters and the brothers share. Is it relatable? Is it relatable? Is it what we call in Hindi ghar ghar ki kahani? So what's the problem? What's the, what's the source of the problem? He has not done his estate planning during his lifetime. He has not created an agreement amongst his children how his property would be divided post his death. And most parents don't do it. And who suffers? Children. Children. And if the children are fighting today for the property, whose fault it is? Rajesh Jain fault. Nobody else. He cannot blame his children that you are fighting over my property. Can he blame them? He has to be blamed. Because he did not do what he had to do during his lifetime. Right? I will give you another situation. A little complicated. Huh? Sonal, your client is 38 years of age. She is happily married to a person called Ritesh, 40 years of age, with two lovely children. Ayush and Ritika, 10 years and 14 years. Both of them are working for MNCs and have accumulated good amount of wealth which is majorly in financial assets like mutual funds, shares and bank FDs of around 9 crore rupees. These financial assets are majorly held singly with cross nominations. So Ritesh asset, Sonal is the nominee, Sonal asset, Ritesh is the nominee. Very few holdings mainly fixed deposits are in joint names in, on either survivor operation basis. Right? Now, now, their real estate 
is self occupied 4 bhk high end residential flat in a posh colony worth 5 crore rupees as per current market price and a plot in delhi worth 2 crore rupees both the properties are titled in the name of rajesh right both of them have aged parents who are were not dependent on them financially sonal is the only daughter of her parents and expects to inherit some real estate from them and same financial assets make basically finance, uh, fixed deposits ritesh has two brothers with whom he will have to share any inheritance he gets from his parents ritesh father is a industrialist running a business and his two brothers are working with his father you get the situation now i'll give you they want you to assess their estate and succession planning situation risk involved and possible solutions right so possible situations for estate planning risk assessment so what could happen in future first is ritesh passes away leaving sonal and two minor children what if ritesh passes away so what if ritesh passes away what if ritesh passes away so whatever ritesh has in spite of nominations and other things it would be divided among how many people four people one is ritesh mother she is alive second is ritesh wife sonal and two children one fourth each right is it acceptable to ritesh what would he want what would he want first two wife maybe then two children yes, yes. but for that what he'll have to do is make a will or create an estate plan or, or create a trust no i want to ask a counter question also how many of you want a part of your wealth to go to your mother was she is a legal heir if you had a mother how many of you wanted to go okay so do you play chess do all of you play chess who is a good chess player who thinks two moves ahead before making a move here also think only two moves ahead after you it goes to your mother after mother to her legal heirs which are your brothers and sisters now how many of you are okay this is about money think carefully so default is not an option for ritesh you agree default is not an option for ritesh he should either make a will or a trust better is a trust because he can do many things after the trust because he has two minor children both these children would get married one day and if the wealth goes to those children and is titled in the name of those children if partners of those children separate this wealth is also at jeopardy they can take it as alimony those kinds of things situations can also be built in future okay i'll come to that second situation is sonal passes away okay when ritesh passes away what about the inheritance he has to get from his father father would say i would not go give it to the daughter in law maybe to the two minor children and generally fathers don't even want to make the daughter in law guardian of that wealth which they are giving to their grandchildren i am do, been doing it for so many years i know no it's a big problem it's a big problem you, you understand the situation yeah so it's not so easy but if he has a trust in place only thing his father has to do is make a will in favor of the trust trust takes care of it and the father's apprehension that daughter in law will use it and not not my grandchildren is taken care of by the trust you you're getting the point so i am making it easy for my parents to give it to me even if i if i am not there if sonal passes away leaving ritesh and two minor children so what happens to sonal's assets they get equally divided between three ritesh son and daughter 
नो प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम और नो प्रॉब्लम सोनल्स फादर मदर दैट द सेम प्रॉब्लम दे वुड नॉट लाइक इट टू गो टू अन इन लॉ दे वुड प्रिफर इट टू गो टू देर देर ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रन राइट द सेम प्रॉब्लम राइट नाउ कम्स थर्ड विच इज वेरी वेरी हाईली अनलाइकली बट वेरी वेरी डेंजरस बोथ ऑफ देम पास अवे साइमल्टेनियसली लिविंग टू माइनर चिल्ड्रन many families now what's the problem first problem is who gets the custody of these two children money comes after money comes after who gets the custody of these two children it doesn't go to the grandparents it doesn't go to the grandparents it doesn't go to sonal's parents or ritesh's parents because as per the indian guardianship and maintenance act there are only three types of guardian first is natural guardian and only parents can be natural guardian nobody apart from parents can be a natural guardian to a child right before 1956 husbands were considered guardians of their wives but now the roles have reversed no okay only two only parents if parents are not there then then court appoints a guardian society becomes the guardian of the child and society is represented by district judge now it becomes judges prerogative who gets the custody of the child and judges in india are very reluctant giving custody of such children to individuals they prefer organizations over individuals and what do you call those organizations who take care of children whose parents are not alive orphanages so would you like your child to go to an orphanage in case both of you pass away while your child is a minor for that purpose there is a third type of guardian possible called testamentary guardian each parent is allowed to appoint a guardian of their child while they are alive through a document called letter of guardianship so if they would have created a letter of guardianship then the custody of their children would have gone to whoever they choose that's the first thing now i come to assets i am saying all the assets have cross nominations now in each of the asset nominee has also died yes or no now the asset is without nomination now the asset is without nomination that means children will have to go to the court and obtain a succession certificate from the court then only they can have the assets is it a problem minor children going to court and getting a succession certificate to get their wealth is it a problem it's a big problem it's a big problem right now i'll give you a very fantastic situation supposedly both of them had made a will also before they died in this case they have not made but suppose they had made a will and that will was reciprocal that will was reciprocal after me everything belongs to you after you everything belongs to me now both have died So what happens to their property? What happens to their property? Hmm? Whose will would be applied? Hmm? Suppose Ritesh in his will said, "I want to give sixty percent to my son, forty percent to my daughter," and Sonal's will says, "I want to give equally to both the children." So who gets what? Hmm? because it would not say that it would not happen that ritesh goes to 60 40 and sonal goes 50 50 no because the law says title of a property cannot remain vacant for even a fraction of a second so law will have to determine who died first 
person who died first his will the surviving partner would get everything and after surviving partner everything would be as per the surviving partner so if ritesh died first the children would get 50 50 if sonal dies first children would get 60 40 get the situation now you will tell you will, you will, you will say both died simultaneously how do i know who died first no 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 lottery law has a provision for that also law says in case we are unable to find which of these two people died first we would assume the person who is younger survived the person who is older and who would be younger so everything as per as per wife's wife's will is it acceptable to you so if you get your will made by a good lawyer they add a clause to the will which is called simultaneous death clause which basically says if our orders of death are not known assume i survived the other person if that clause is put in both the wills then ritesh property as per ritesh will sonal's property as per sonal's will and that's the difference between a lawyer and a good lawyer you need a specialist for this work you don't need a common lawyer who doesn't know estate planning he's a cut copy paste lawyer you need specialist this is a specialist job i always say in estate planning there are there are things which you know that you know then there are certain things which you know that you don't know and lastly there are certain things which you don't know that you don't know the last one is the most risky for that you require a professional who is specializing into it not your everyday lawyer this is the this is today world has turned to specialist not specialist super specialist why because that knowledge is very important chali i come to the fourth situation one of them becomes physically or mentally incapacitated now what happens suppose ritesh is uh, uh, in coma so how would sonal be able to access ritesh assets which are solely in ritesh name get the situation for that he should have created or both of them should have created something called a springing durable financial power of attorney which would have allowed the other partner to step into the shoes of the disabled partner and do whatever was allowed in that power attorney to the to the okay partner very very important springing durable financial power of attorney springing durable durable finance swinging durable financial power of attorney now i come to the fifth situation ritika marries and does not get along with her husband and separates from him now what happens alimony hmm? claims and maybe some part of ritesh and sonal's wealth goes to the husband Ayush marries and does not got get along from his wife and separate from all of these are possible all these situations are possible Ritesh passes away before receiving inheritance from his parents this i have i have told you big issue Sonal passes away before receiving inheritance from her parents would you like to take care of all these eight situations for a client's family is it worth your advice when you talk about these things and this is what happens in generally in families right that is estate planning solutions it's beyond it's beyond doing wealth management it's wealth transfer planning estate planning i'll give you one more situation situation 3 Som Charan is age 72 and his wife Charulata is age 64. They have four children, 
two sons and two daughters. Their elder son Ajay is 51 years married but lost his wife some years ago, leaving a teenage daughter Deepthi age 16 years. The other son Akshit is 46 years of age is and is married but has no children. Their two daughters are married, elder one having one son, younger one having two sons. The younger daughter has some marital issue with her husband but does not want to separate from him. Assets, the couple have two major assets. Independent residential house worth around 5 crore rupees with four floors, titled in the name of Soam Churan. A commercial property rented out giving a monthly rent of around 2 lakh rupees worth 8 crore rupees, titled in the name of Charulata. They do not have much financial assets and are dependent on the rental income for their expenses and income. Right? They want you to assess their estate and succession planning, risk involved in possible solutions. You get the situation? All of you get the situation? Now I come to possible situations and estate planning risks. First is, Som Charan passes away leaving Charulata. Right? And what does Som Charan has in his name? Residential house, which is occupied by Charulata also. So as per law, if he passes away without making a will, what will happen to the house? Five equal shares. One for the wife and four for the other people. And mother is not there. Somcharan mother is not alive. Now, I would not say fortunately, but yes. Otherwise, she would, she would also be a part of it. Right? Now, floors are four. Owners are? Equal division is not possible. And three of them live in that house. Other two daughters are not living. The sons and the wife is living. So, it's a problem. It's the first problem. Second, second, an even bigger problem is the financial literacy levels of Charulata. Will she be able to manage this wealth even if she gets it? Hmm? Will your spouse be able to replace you when it comes to your wealth management issues after you? Are they capable of doing it? So does your job end by just giving it to them? Or should you ensure that they have the capability, skill, knowledge, attitude to take care of that wealth after you? No? That's an important part of estate planning. Is it not? Whatever wealth you go, give to your spouse, if they are not able to manage it, no worth, not worth giving it. And here the trust helps. Because now a trustee can take care of it and the wife remains the sole beneficiary till she is there. Right? Second situation is Charu Lata passes away leaving Som Charan. Now she has the she has the commercial property which is their income source. Now that gets divided into five equal parts. Is that two lakh rupees divided by five enough for Som Charan? Hmm? Well legally it's five equal divisions. You are, you are getting the complexity. Doing nothing does what? And I am not going very deep. Very deep I go, many more problems are there. I am just giving you the overview. Right? Third, both of them pass away leaving the four children. Now division becomes very very difficult. Till parents are there, at least they can say I want this, I want that. And maybe the children listen to them. But if all, both of them pass away, there is wealth, there are children, children have their spouses, children have their children. There are so many stakeholders in that decision, oh, we want it. And nobody minds something coming to them. No? Big problem. One of them becomes physically or mentally incapacitated. So they should have created a springing durable power attorney. And it is mostly required for the wife so that the rent still comes. Because their income source is that rent. That needs to be secured in case she becomes incapacitated. Who will renew the rent agreement? Who will issue the rent receipts? You need somebody to do that na? and somebody should have the power to do it. 
that goes only by power attorney right ajay marries and does not get along with his second wife and separates from her now one of one part of their wealth goes to their separating spouse of a married child that's a risk one of their child passes away leaving minor children right now it has to go to the minor child and they have to decide a guardian of that child amongst them who takes care of the child so these are some situations so i'll do the last situation before i call it all of you are relating to these situations yes. right right mr goel builds and leases out property all properties are either owned in individual name or in the name of their company he has three children while his brother who is an equal shareholder in all the business has two children he creates a revocable discretionary trust by writing a trust deed which defines the distribution of income among future generations earned by the trust by way of leasing out these properties he also defines conditions under which the trust can buy sell or lease future properties for management of the trust he has appointed his long time chartered accountant and an advocate as a trustee after him the first trustee is he and his brother after both of them these two step in then he has also laid down procedures for appointment of future trustees when he the settler is not there his mother has willed her property which she has in her name in the name of the trust instead of giving it to the children so now this will come into the trust now however transferring the asset he had to re-register the property in the name of the trust and pay the stamp duty now he purchases new properties in the name of the trust directly now, old property transfer is a problem but new property you can buy it in the name of the trust so no retitling problem right so this is the solution which would last for generations right this is a solution which would last for generations management is taken care of beneficiaries would be initial beneficiaries he and his brother right whatever proportion they decide after both of them their children will get the wealth equally in each bloodline i can but that would be a concern you have two children i have three children i have two children my brother has three children i would not make it one by five each i would say my share would go to my children and your share would go to your children so what we say in the trust it would be divided equally amongst each bloodline and there are two bloodlines he and his brother and future generations also now some some question which people generally ask me when we create a trust and i ask them before i, I create a trust who would be the beneficiaries future beneficiaries so who would be the future beneficiaries you have options there would it be only lineal blood descendants of your children or would it be children and their spouses so what i basically want to ask do you want to exclude the spouse of your children and adopted children from the future beneficiaries and people would have different notions about it some say yes it should go some uh, very few say it should go generally they say it should only go to my bloodline right what happens if one of the bloodline does not have a child you understand the situation then ideally they would say it would go to the, the their share would go to the surviving bloodline so we can put those conditions right now who would be the trustees how would they be elected so i know me and my brother are trustees these two chartered accountants are trustees i can even say whenever my child reaches at age of 25 he joins as a trustee i can put a clause like that you know the trustees the number of trustees in the family would be so that each bloodline has equal representation i would not like it to happen one has three children other has two children there are five and decision is taken by majority so this bloodline is calling the shots i would say equal representation from each bloodline right so i can make a structure which survives over generations 
by creating a private family trust right and many of your clients would like that to happen no one of the biggest concerns of people who own wealth is i want my wealth to remain in my family forever chinese call it paddy field to paddy field in three generations irish call it potato field to potato field in three generations english call it shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations what happens is one generation creates the wealth second one consumes it and third one starts from where for the first one started it's a global phenomenon and what do you want you want your wealth to remain in your family forever forever no so my great grandmother gave me the mantra to ensure that this family wealth remains in your family forever so she had some saying from her village which i quote in hindi then i'll tell you the english translation she said poot saput to kyon sanjoye aur poot ka poot to kyon sanjoye if your son is good why do you accumulate wealth and if he is not good then also why do you accumulate wealth question is what is the purpose of your wealth what can your wealth achieve during your lifetime your wealth can only ensure one thing it can help create inheritors who are capable of creating their own wealth and maybe take care of your wealth beyond this your wealth can do nothing no yeah your wealth can only help create inheritors who are capable of creating their own wealth or taking care of your wealth because it is possible yeah or i would say it's inevitable at some generation in your family there would be a rahul gandhi or anil ambani being born what happens then no right so wealth protection and transfer are best taken care of through estate planning so i'll uh, i'll talk about wealth advisors why can't they ignore wealth transfer planning why is it necessary for you uh, vyas is here vyas If you talk to your clients about wills, power of attorney, letter of guardianship, or a living will, whom would you think they are working for? Whom do you think they think you are working for? Whom are you working for? Them or yourself? Them. So level of trust goes to the next level. No, no. So it's a very great, very great. trust building mechanism and when i discuss wealth transfer planning with a client he shares information with me which is very very deep very very deep no if you want me to you, me to make your will what would you discuss with me first you will disclose all your assets to me which till date you don't know do you know all the assets of your client and if you know are you sure that's the only one but when he makes a will he'll have to disclose he'll has to disclose na so you know all his assets second you know all his relationships no relationships come very fast out of the will no so you get complete knowledge of your client that is kyc know your client that's complete kyc yes if you help a client with their wealth transfer decision what kind of relationship will you have with your client share of wallet or share of mind share of mind it becomes mental relationship and share of mind if you have a share of mind relationship you don't have to share the wallet entire wallet is yours and by creating a will i create relationship with three generations parents of my client and children of my client including the client 
so i am servicing three generations there was a study done by carvey which they, which said 60% children do not keep their father's advisor as their advisor and that's the truth but if you help the children get their parents well you would become their default advisors <coughs> because you have done that estate planning for them so for your relationship to continue in the family estate planning is the best tool to do it estate planning is the best tool to ensure that this relationship continues in the family for generations right have you lost the asset of a spouse or family member after a client dies some of your clients would have passed away in covid or after covid or before covid what happens to the aum which the client has would you want to keep it with you do estate planning do estate planning right are your relationship with your client couples one sided you know the client but not the spouse or the children this helps create relationship with the entire family because when you are doing that estate planning exercise i insist that the family is involved any estate plan which does not include the wishes and desires of the family is highly unlikely to survive right uh, before i hand it over to uh, vyas i'll give you two or three pointers which are on the emotional aspects of estate plan because what i believe is estate planning is 90% emotions only 10% technicals right if i ask you one question how many of you would give your assets after both of you to your children equally how many of you would like to do that hmm? now my counter question to you is is equal fair sir equal is seldom fair very very few instance equal is fair generally it is unfair but is the easiest option for the parents is the most non controversial option as the parent think so to avoid that discomfort they say equally no i'll give you some instances where equal is not fair you had two children two sons one to, one went on to become a doctor he could not get admitted to a medical college or government government medical college you funded his education worth 1 crore rupees other one was smart he became a chartered accountant less than 5 lakh rupees spent you give them equally are you fair nahi nahi are you fair just try nahi nahi just try to make the doctor understand i am giving you 1 crore less because i spent more on your education he will say i will i have not stopped my brother to become a doctor no problem with parents is you have to be fair and appear to be fair also and there's where the trick lies ancestor is even more difficult ancestor is even more difficult you you get my point now i i give a counter argument to this you have two children one is doing very well in life other is struggling financially what would you do huh? by doing so if you are giving more to the person who is struggling and less to the person who is doing well you are punishing success and rewarding failure you are not doing it you are punishing success and rewarding failure person who listen to you entire life discipline did everything right became successful today he is being punished to become a successful person and someone who did nothing in his life he is being giving reward are you fair hmm that's that's where estate planning comes it's here those papers are what it's here only right so i just pass it on to vyas i not take much time i can speak all day about it after this after this after we are sure sure sure
प्लीज हैव अ सीट थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच आई विल गिव यू टाइम श्योर 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 प्लीज थैंक यू थैंक यू सर आई थिंक दैट्स अ वेरी पर्सनल क्वेश्चन अगेन एस्टेट प्लानिंग इज ऑलवेज अ प्राइवेसी मैटर बट येस वन टू वन यू कैन ऑलवेज अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट दी मे बी एंड अगेन इट्स वेरी कस्टमाइज द केस टू केस बेसिस द प्लान विल चेंज मे बी वॉट ही हेज डन फॉर हिमसेल्फ मे नॉट अप्लाई टू ऑल ऑफ यू और मे बी फ्यू ऑफ यू और मे बी नन ऑफ यू बट येस यू गेट अ गुड आइडिया ऑफ लुकिंग एट एस्टेट प्लानिंग एज अ सब्जेक्ट दैट He wants to address. Yeah. Achha, no problem. Yeah, yeah good. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Done, done. I got your point. We will do that. I thought you were asking about his own estate plan. No, no, no. <laughs> so my, uh, so how many of you think now that estate planning uh, you have understood or how would like to appreciate the power of estate planning? Have you felt that power of estate planning now? After this, what what is the change you feel in yourself before this session and after this session? do you think that if you add estate planning to your existing business will make sense for you yes. and do you agree that till date since we have not added how much business loss we have done actually how many of you would agree that estate planning right now to our business will make sense all of you thank you so now i will take you to the next level from here thank you dipak ji for giving us the perspective on the Uh, estate planning why estate planning is important for us and for our business already uh, sorry yeah correct so yeah so i think uh, the lack of knowledge the point what is sharing i will i will put it in a different way as a question to uh, all of you how many of you think or why you think that estate planning cannot be offered by you let me ask a negative question in today's state whatever way we are doing our business why you think estate planning cannot be offered by you one gentleman said is a lack of knowledge in estate planning can you can you have uh, can you share second opinion on this what could be the second reason that why i cannot offer estate planning currently sorry okay okay that's a very valid point expertise certification sorry formal certification anything else might be customer things that we cannot rely upon you right so let me think what i have and what so maybe that knowledge once you have a knowledge a conviction will come sir uh, lawyers i can say yes but frankly uh, i'm sorry to say but unfortunately with the history of financial advisory in india ca becomes by default the financial advisor they were never a financial advisors there was no mfds there was no ins uh, insurance were still there but there was no uh, you know rias there were no professionals on this space so by default taxation was there income was going there so they become a mft by default without a qualification they become a financial advisor but you are the experts today in india and estate planning again goes as a expert knowledge so what if i say that these issues can be easily taken care and you can start your business from tomorrow on estate planning will that make sense for you so i have two things to share with you on this platform one is if you start estate planning please note my points uh, when i say two things one is you start estate planning you require client support for delivering the estate planning services that is number 1 number 2 before your client knowing that you can offer estate planning it is important for them to know that you can offer estate planning so for you to go to your client and tell them that i want to offer estate planning will only happen when you know certain things about estate planning and again it comes back to boils down to the issue that do i have the requisite knowledge or requisite skill set to talk to my clients by doing two things today one already uh, how many of you were there in the event yesterday please raise your hands i think most of you so whoever is was not there uh, 
still we have something to offer to them today. So by default, you all know that since you have attended the uh, event yesterday, you have all got three months of estate planning membership complimentary of next gen estate planning solutions. Are you aware of this uh, offering? So what does, sorry? Okay, I will, I will uh, tell you what you already have and what you should utilize and how you can make the maximum benefit out of it. Right, so this estate planning membership services basically is a three month membership services which you have got it wherein you get a free services from our side to offer estate planning services to a client. That's one part. But now again the question will come back that how do we really offer this service to our client? Right. One is you go directly to a client and tell them I am offering estate planning. They will tell you I want to make a will, I want to make a trust which I am not sure of. So I want to take to the next level. And we have a set process of doing everything. We already have 1500 plus mutual fund distributors who are already empaneled with us into this platform and offering estate planning services. They have already started changing their business. But as that gentleman also said, they will not rely probably, he also said maybe that we are not a CEO or a lawyer, that how will they actually rely? But you know one uh, biggest positive fact which you have in your favor is that your client already trusts you. Going to a new person, a lawyer, ISCA for that matter, first is on these kinds of emotional quotient, you know, uh, uh, the sharing of information, the client is never comfortable to share in the very first meeting. But with you, since you are already into a relation with so many years and time with the client, you can, he is always comfortable to start that business or that estate planning services with you. You are by default first choice. But to become that right choice, it is important that we talk sense to them for estate planning because they should also feel, I know I am safe with you as a financial advisor or MFD in their hands for the investments, but since estate planning sounds also a little tricky to the investors also, though it's very easy, it's all that how we look at it. Coming to the acquiring of a knowledge, we have a proper certification on this. Uh, we have a training of around 50 hours in that. The certification is called Chartered Trust and Estate Planner. In that certification, whatever is required, so why actually we need that certification? First, I will tell you that. Once you go and meet your clients, start telling them, I am, a, I am offering estate planning into my business. First benefit will come to you that uh, if your business starts, you will add uh, new income stream to your business, number one. Number two, you are able to conversate with the clients on estate planning. You are able to acquire HNIs and ultra HNIs also. Today is one of the biggest challenge where we are facing is how to acquire, you know, HNI, ultra HNI. That's a big question for us because we at the end see goal is how to increase my AUM, right? If I am planning even for a legacy for my business, until I really have an AUM, what I am going to give to my children for that? It's not just a process oriented business maybe, which I want to offer them, but a AUM which we want to offer it to them. So when you meet your clients and why estate planning becomes important with them is if you are able to converse it on different aspects. For example, when you are meeting your client, he he is not sure about what he is requiring, but he knows that there is an issue in my family and I want to talk about that. If you do that certification, you know how you are going to start that conversation. How you are going to acquire these HNI and ultra HNI when I say, they are looking for different point of uh, start point for conversation to initiate talks. If you go them every time and talk about investments, there are bankers already doing that with HNI, ultra HNI. There are many other MFDs who are already doing that. How you are going to make a difference? So if you are qualified, if you have the right skill set, if you are talking something new with them, which is making sense for them, then that business will start coming to you. See, I am here not to change the, the way you are doing your business. I am here to talk about how you are going to add something the way you are doing to your business and then increase your business. So for example, let me give an example. If a client makes a will with you, what's the beauty of it? He will be able to share all the financial assets. Today we are under impression probably that uh, 
you know the we are the only mfd or the advisor for our client where we are thinking that we are the 100% portfolio owner of the client but when you will see the page with the financial assets you will realize maybe you are only 20 30 50 maybe 70% for that matter but there is still a huge scope for you to have the or to increase your aum or to get more money to be invested by the client because he is already taking the services maybe from bank for that matter not the other mfd but for bank because bank bank also are in regular touch with the clients you are not a bank account uh, you are not a bank and you don't give them a bank account services right and bank also cross sells so there is a lot of amount which is being invested through banks also which you don't know and which will never come to know also but with the will when you do that you know the financial assets of your client so that's the Uh, the beauty of estate planning will add value to your business by knowing that with the existing client only, without incurring a tag, the cost of acquisition of the new client, I can increase my business. So the cost of business is low, but increase in revenue is high. So that's the model. With a simple will, you can generate business. Second benefit, if I say, what about the trust? I can tell you seven best use cases for using the trust. And acquiring the HNIs and the ultra HNI by just selling them trust. And but how do you increase your mutual fund business in that? I will give you one classic case on that. For example, when you are uh, making a trust of a client, what happens in that? So as he explained the uh, yesterday also, he had a session on trust and trust deed. So when you are making a trust, there are beneficiaries to the trust. and to manage the trust who is that person who is going to manage the trust what if i say as a mutual fund distributor you can become that uh, trustee to manage the fund and why the settler would make you a trustee because he already trusts you that you know in his absence when he is no more that the funds which he has accumulated during the lifetime with your help will be well managed after you but what's the advantage of you becoming a trustee in this i will give you an example of uh, and i i can promise you on this if you follow this methodology to increase the business or in your existing model of your business maybe 5 year or 10 years down the line whatever your aum is from your existing clients and the type of client which i am saying to acquire can uh, replicate the same level of aum within that given time period how is that that going to happen how many of you have clients within the age category of 55 to 65 how many of you have the number of clients uh, and good number of clients maybe uh, 55 to 65 or maybe let me ask first question is how many of you have your clients between 55 and 65 raise your hands so a client who has a age group of 55 to 65 some or above 55 for that matter so above 55 so you have clients having a age group of above 55 right so assuming uh, what could be the percentage of that so for example you have 100 clients what could be the percentage normally uh, of that age group of clients in your portfolio 25 somebody else 60 i think you have an ideal case of estate planning i will come on that how and what about the uh, tw- uh, somebody said 10 so 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 should i assume that it is going to range up to 25% on a higher side i am assuming that's a 25% case exceptionally like sir said maybe above 60% of his client numbers are in the estate planning i am going to share a hard fact don't take me otherwise but that's a hard fact of the business and because the business of insurance and estate planning i was just sharing with few of your colleagues here works on the theory of fear and what is this theory of fear when you buy insurance you know that i am going to die and if i take insurance after my demise my family will be taken care of with whatever the sum assured proceeds are going to hit my account right that's the fear that who will take care of my family that's how why i buy insurance same is estate planning that what if i am no more who is going to take care of my family the only thing is that estate plan takes care of your family in a different way now when you are creating a trust and i was giving an example of the number of uh, clients when you have a clients above the age of 55 
with the given average age of what's the average age of men in india sorry 80 that's i think women so what's the average age of men in india 75 to 80 75 uh, to 18 so if in my portfolio i have a clients above the age of 55 or 60 over the period of next 10 years see everyone is not living 75 and 80 for that matter these some proceeds which are going to hit my account through trust so normal average again uh, how many of are offering insurance here in the room along with mutual fund i think 60% of you are offering insurance now my with my example i think many of you would like to sell insurance after this example along with your mutual fund business imagine that some insure proceeds is coming to the trust after the demise and you are the mutual fund distributor as a trustee and you are supposed to manage that the fund which are going to come in this 10 period of year you have acquired some clients within this age group and already like 60% of the people who are in this age group is a challenge at the same time is a opportunity also so the balance is very important sir so what will happen is over the period of 10 years the number of some proceeds which are average aum also if i say the sum proceed which is going to be bare minimum for a masses today is also 1 cr anybody who is buying a life insurance bare minimum is somewhere 1 cr so if i say 1 cr 2 cr 5 cr on average imagine the amount of money which is going to come as an aum that is supposed to be managed by you as a mfd and today what is the aum we, we have maybe 50 cr 100 cr or maybe 200 cr i know in, in india we have very less people uh, above 300 cr as a aum but i still assume that we have uh, 100 aum uh, 100 cr as a aum average in this room then with this 10 years 5 year 2 uh, 5 5 cr 2 cr 1 cr even if we get 50 clients of such in 10 years then imagine what is your aum after 10 years whole life you are working for 20 30 years with that you have spent 30 years almost or 20 years almost for that 100 cr and i am saying i can promise you in 5 to 10 years with that same aum you are able to manage that fund so that's the beauty of a trust Sure, please. So, uh, yes, so, there was, so what method? It's called waterfall method. So every generation, the trust buys a life insurance policy. It acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against that life insurance policy. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against those policies. Then it acquires value. Then it allows to take loans against Sir, it's a method they follow. They will not escape that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Trust will continue. But on violation, and that, in fact, the trust will be taken to be captured. But violation is not possible within the scheme of this commodity. Because it is written in the terms and conditions of the trust. And trustee.
trustees are liable for if this section 340 10 years of yeah. See, there are simple two cases. I think what you are talking. One is a with insurance. One is a without insurance. Right? With insurance is the method they are following, which comes as a blanket. Either take it or leave it. That's simple. One is without insurance, like in India, if I have to say, if you are trying to say from that perspective, without insurance, you can create a trust, you can run a trust, you can build, and everything what we have talked about so far can be done without insurance. But we are talking of ways to increase your business. What if you have included the insurance will add value to your business? How you are going to grow your AUM? So not having an insurance and trust, that's fine. Not necessary. He is saying there is an exception. One of the trustees decides not to work. Then what will happen? Will the trust be dissolved? I'm not. This is an example. Yes. 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 Y
close. Uh, please keep the mic near you. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a lawyer with 25 years of experience. I've been a practice. Yeah, hi, good morning. I'm Kiran Gupta. I'm a lawyer with 25 years of experience. 25 years of experience. I've been a practicing lawyer as well as I've been uh, a part of in-house legal teams in companies. Uh, I've been with the Tata Group, then I've been with Satyam Computers, then I've been a general counsel of a private equity fund managing their uh, about $700 million uh, assets. And uh, right now, I'm also uh, the general counsel of one of India's fastest growing agri-tech and agri-commerce company. Now, I've been designated with the Forbes uh, uh, top general counsel uh, in their power list in 2022. Now, this, uh, this is, uh, estate planning has been especially very intriguing for the reason that as a lawyer, I've observed various families get into protracted legal disputes because they have not, they failed to plan. We, we saw some of the examples when uh, Deepak sir was actually presenting. These are reflection of reality. Lot of families, they spend a lot of time in actually accumulating the wealth, but then they hit a, they hit a pause button where they feel that they logically don't move, move to the next step of actually how they want to plan their estates. See, that's exactly where the estate planning uh, becomes very important. I personally am focusing on uh, special needs, estate planning for families having children with special needs. And that is my core, core expertise and that's exactly what I'm focusing on. Now for a second, uh, we'll just need to understand what special needs is. Now, there are a lot of children with uh, developmental disorders, they are autistic, then they ADHD, ASD, then mental retardants, and uh, they can be cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and so on and so forth. Various families have children of uh, such, uh, uh, such disorders, and they are called children with special needs. There are other disabilities also. Maybe they have children who are either deaf, blind, and things like that, but I'm not getting into that aspect at all. Because the first category of special needs that I told is more related to mental disorders, which means the law recognizes they are not competent to contract. See, a, a child without limbs or blind or deaf or any other uh, uh, disability, once they grow, as long as their brain is functioning properly, they are of a sound mind, they are competent to contract, they can manage things, their things on their own with little help. But the entire gamut changes once a, once a family has a special needs child because technically the child has a lot of challenges in terms of thinking for oneself what is good for and they are never independent. They require caregiving. Say for example, if you take a normal person of 40 to 50 years person and assuming that he has a, a son of say 15 years or 20 years, technically because of the fact that the special needs child cannot make a living for themselves, meaningful living for themselves, technically as an estate planner, you need to plan not only for the entire retirement age of the person, but also the entire lifetime of the special needs child also. So technically, the estate plan that you will actually prepare for a family with special needs is, runs to around 60 to 65 years or at times 70 years based on longevity where the first 30 to 35 years you have the your client, the family of your client and the child and post their demise, then it is only the special needs child who is going to continue living until until the special needs child passes away. So Kiran sir, uh, uh, I think we can also add something that how actually when you were learning this certification yeah, okay. helped you to for the special need. Uh, sure. learning. So, as a lawyer, when I was interacting with a lot of this, these clients, technically a lot of people used to come, please help me write a will. Okay, we prepare a will and give as a lawyer. Then there are times when people come and tell, somewhere they've heard or read in some articles that a trust is required, you prepare a trust. 
But this course, though I'm a lawyer, I've been on a standalone basis dealing with certain documents which the client might require. This particular course opened a different paradigm shift for me in terms of the perception where estate planning needs to look, be looked at a very comprehensive basis. Now, it's not only uh, required as a lawyer to approach on a very transactional basis where you prepare a will and give or a trust deed and give, but give a solution to the client. That becomes very important because once you approach it as a solution provider, technically they are more receptive and they feel that there is a lot of meaningful engagement that happens. You, you become the well-wisher for the person and you are, you are thinking on a long-term basis and predominantly thinking of what happens after their debt and who's going to hand, uh, manage or how, how the special needs child is going to uh, be taken care of. There are physical requirements, I'm not going to get into the details, but there are physical requirements like uh, nutrition, dietary, medicine, medical and all that. And then there are the financial resources where a lot of things that comes out of the course in terms of the tools for estate planning. Because this, this course actually opened up the options of giving the requisite tools. But as lawyers, you know all these documents, the legalities around this. But how do you fit those tools into a particular problem and look at it in a comprehensive basis is what this course would offer. Really an eye-opener on certain aspects in terms of the comprehensive approach that we can take in terms of providing a solution to uh, solution to estate planning. And, and see, there are, there are, for example, it's always uh, the objective will be to deal with uh, ultra uh, high net worth individuals and high net worth individuals. But this particular thing, as Deepak sir yesterday told that, it's time that every Indian has an estate plan. Technically, if you look at uh, special needs, the, the, the area that I focus, certain reports tell that children between 2 to 10 years old, about 1.2 to 2% 1 to 2 are autistic. In, in the country today, there are certain reports that tell 18 million people are uh, uh, autistic and uh, special needs. Technically, those are your total addressable market time, is what you call in your business sense. So technically, those are something that you can focus on. Because every, every parent who's got a special needs child is worried about who is going to take care of their child after their demise. Now the point is, for, for the purpose of physical caregiving, there are various, uh, various institutions, various uh, models of uh, caregiving that's emerging in the country today. But in order to be able to avail those services, putting a proper mechanism in place to handle the corpus in order to feed in for the maintenance for the next 25, 30 or 65 years, becomes very important and that's exactly where the tools that you learn in this course is going to be of a lot of help in terms of giving a solution to your client. Now every family is different, Now, not that whatever you do for one family will actually you can readily templatize and fit it uh, into other families. Every family is different. Every family's aspirations and concerns are extremely different. So you need to be able to actually customize your solution. So this knowledge of what works well in a certain given scenario is what the course is going to offer. So, Thank you, Kiran, sir. Yeah. yeah. I think he can, being a lawyer, he can keep going on, keep going on and on. So, uh, please, thank you. So, what I understand uh, is there is a huge potential in estate planning. So, when we say about estate planning, it's not just about the uh, financial assets or other things. There are a lot of things what we can look at from the estate planning. And there is a way of acquiring new clients through estate planning. Because, again, uh, whosoever has attended my yesterday's session, when you start doing EQ selling, the emotional question selling, IQ doesn't matter. And once you have that EQ selling, you have that emotional connect with your clients. And the moment that happens, the business automatically comes. Because that's always ancillary. Keep your client first, the business will always follow. Uh, thank you so much, Kiran sir. Now I would like to invite Ms. Bhavya to share her experience for the CTP certification and that how that has helped her. And just to give you a brief background of yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Vyas. Uh, thank you for that. 
uh, and thank you, Mr. Deepak, as well. Uh, I think your talk was very uh, uh, enlightening, and I think it was very impactful in uh, you know stressing the need for every Indian family to have an estate plan. Uh, so uh, I am a lawyer as well, and while I was doing estate planning work um, as part of my work, I, I work as a partner in uh, a law firm called J. Sagar Associates, the Chennai office of that law firm. Um, and over the years, I have worked with a lot of families. Uh, but somewhere, I was kind of looking out for something that could elevate this in terms of being a cohesive course designed to uh, uh, elevate the estate planning requirement for my clients. And that is where this uh, Chartered Trust and Estate Planning course came in for me. Uh, and I decided to take it up. And it was something which really tied in well with my existing skill set. And I think that I was able to provide more and additional services to my clients by having that skill set. Now, obviously, all of you here discuss investment strategies and plans with your clients. You should know that having an estate plan in place is not just helping them, but it is going to be helping their family for generations to come. And when I say helping them, I don't really just refer to helping them monetarily preserve their wealth. Um, I'm sure all of you value your relationships with your family members. They are the ones who are there for you in times of need. You can have all the money in the world, but when your situation is dire, your brother, sister, someone in the family comes to your need uh, physically and emotionally. By encouraging your clients to have an estate plan in place, it could be as simple as having a will in place. You could be preventing disputes and confusion among their children after their demise. And that is a huge gift to give to their children. Because you are giving your children the gift of a good relationship going forward. Uh, that is something which I think I impress upon clients that tomorrow, after your lifetime, everything is great now, but after your lifetime, would you not want your children and your grandchildren to have a great relationship going forward, be there for each other through ups and downs? One way is by reducing conflict and reducing confusion after your demise. Setting things out in a very clear manner sets them up on a path to be a family that's together in the future uh, and not fighting over every last penny. Uh, while nobody wants that for the children, in reality, unfortunately, that does happen. Um, Another area that I think um, doing this course may help all of you uh, is encouraging your clients who need it to set up trust structures. Um, while wills and settlements are at least quite well known to most families, maybe not all the importance of it, but most, uh, this is something which the knowledge of having this will enable you to provide uh, a lot of uh, value add to your clients uh, because it is allowing them to not just manage their assets after their lifetime, but even during. And a lot of people are afraid to talk about estate planning because nobody wants to talk about their demise. But they don't realize that it could be an effective structure for managing even today could be more tax efficient for them even today and that could continue after their lifetime. Uh, increasingly, I think we see that 
people are coming into a lot more money at a much younger age earlier people were 60 70 before they decided to plan out their estate today i see people in their 30s and 40s coming and saying i want to discuss this i want to understand what i can do uh people a lot of people tend to have children much later than they used to so in their 30s and 40s they have uh, small children who are going going to you know play school or you know elementary school they fear uh, especially post pandemic they fear what will happen if uh, myself and my spouse are no more and uh, you know 100 crores suddenly comes to my children or whatever number that is it could be 5 it could be 100 it could be more um what will happen to them who will manage this without cheating my children without pushing the funds elsewhere when they are too young to know some families in fact share with me quite openly that they don't even want the children to have it when they are uh, 21 they like my uh, son if he gets hold of this kind of money at 21 he is going to go buy himself a ferrari and drive it around and that's not what i want for it by having a structure like a trust in place you can ensure that your children have enough money to take care of health education education again being the true wealth because that's going to enable them to create wealth themselves in the future and ensure that they can pull out money from it any time for the essential requirements and you can set a trigger event that the money will come to them when they are 30 35 whatever it is and of course you could have all the kinds of clauses that mr deepak was talking about where if they had separate from a spouse what will happen if they have a uh, you know if 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 a child has a disability what will happen all of these things can be factored in and fitted into it and uh, you know finally each family will be better off having this in place putting it in place yes lots of difficult discussions with family members but the benefits they reap will be invaluable uh, and therefore uh, having that ability to advise your clients in this you may need a lawyer to put some things into place or structure things the right way later or you want a ca to advise on the tax aspects that is fine but for the initial estate planning conversation the people in this room i think would be apt to have that discussion because you are already trusted and you are already discussing their investment plan with them uh so i think um, i'll stop here and uh, i hope uh, you know everyone here is encouraged to uh learn more about estate planning and equip themselves with the skill to offer it to their clients thank you thank you bhavya for <coughs> for your insightful views thank you bhavya ma'am i think and i always believe that you know the job what you do as a mutual fund distributor which i also also shared yesterday is always a noble profession because you make lives and what rightly said by ma'am also and rather she has given me one new notion today for estate planning while i was listening to her it's a gift of life and it's also a gift for life so estate planning is a gift of life when you give it to your next generation and when things work good for you it's your gift for life because after that your life becomes easy you are happy with your life thank you so much for your enlightening words uh, bhavya ma'am now i would like to open this uh, forum for your questions with the two uh, you know the stalwarts lawyers who have so first thought was to have them here was because lot of mfds have this uh, question in mind that estate plan can only be offered by the lawyers and not by the mfds so we thought why not let's have the lawyers also on the platform that who themselves being a lawyer are doing chartered trust and estate planner because it's a solution based advisory services and as i said in my uh, while i was addressing that 
it's a best marriage between a mutual fund distributor and an investor for estate planning services can always happen with the ctp certification uh, now uh, i would like to open this forum to ask anything on the ctp certification like how is the curriculum or uh, maybe i will start with the first question ma'am and sir uh, how how this what is the curriculum which, which actually you studied during the program and uh, how was your journey how much time did it take for you to complete this program see actually uh, there were six modules of books and uh, which we had to study and uh, each was an in depth uh, coverage on the relevant subject now obviously uh, you can do it uh, in the soonest possible time but personally for me it took about a year's time uh, considering that i i had to also manage my work and things like that but i am very confident uh, people can do it much earlier than that because i i am guilty of actually not utilizing the best of time but but frankly speaking if if somebody were to put their heart to it and a lot of uh, effort it can be done at a very very short pace and time there's a lot of uh, support in terms of the uh, video uh, videos and the online coaching and things like that so those of were also of great help and uh, it helps you to understand the concepts well the the faculty are eminent uh, persons in the relevant uh, areas so very approachable and uh, will clarify all these doubts uh, at whatever point in time so it was very useful uh, if not for the curriculum if not for this course technically we as lawyers would have approached the entire thing on a very transactional basis rather mm. than a holistic uh, way so thank you uh, bhavya ma'am i think the course is uh, very well structured and segmented uh like sir said you have a lot of uh, uh videos and uh, talks which you can listen to and when you do a lot of it kind of uh, uh you know you absorb it faster than when just reading it out of a textbook um for a non uh, lawyer there may be some concepts that are new to you uh but i think that between the course books and the you know faculty and things like that it can definitely be overcome um i took some time to finish the course but more because i think like he said sometimes when you're already in a profession and you're already busy with various things you take your own time to read and finish off but uh, i think i think like he said wholeheartedly i think uh, you know within 6 months to a year can easily uh, uh, complete this course oh, they also provided a lot of uh, i think uh, uh, you know uh, test exams yeah. and you could do practice exams before you wrote the actual exam and that was very helpful uh, thank you ma'am so basically if you take an admission what i gather uh, you get the whole content we get a textbooks on estate planning on six modules so that you learn comprehensively about uh, each and every aspect about the estate planning because uh, when you meet your client as i said when we started this discussion why you know a client would think you can offer an estate planning services that conviction will only come when you know the nuances of estate planning you never know that this hni or ultra hni is going to throw what question on you while discussion because uh, see it's always first meeting is always a point of make or break if you answer those question you are able to make the meeting he is your client if you are not able to answer then the confidence is gone right so though he might be your existing client but he will have a apprehension and a mindset that you are good for my investment but maybe you are not good for my estate planning so that's always his choice but to that situation should not arise with our existing client and even for that the new client uh what the way we have devised and designed the uh, content and curriculum it's already been years now in the market uh, good part is uh, we have always got a very good response it covers all the aspects of estate planning from your family years of uh, b side of the male or female so you'll see that all the discussion normally happens from the will trust 
perspective types of uh, wills or types of trust which are there everything you will learn in that uh, course curriculum you also get a recorded videos uh, on those c complete uh, content and curriculum because we understand you are a professional you have to study on your own sweet time so you can always go back study books you can go back to the videos and see what is the explanation of those text uh, so that you have that hand holding at your own pace at your own speed then we also have lot of uh, text exams the question the quizzes and all and even you get a online platform to study those text digitally so for example if you are traveling but you want to study so that's also a possibility you can study from your e uh, pdfs which are there in your online uh, account as a student account which you get from outside and there are a lot of quizzes also there plus if you are looking uh, for a training we don't uh, run regular batches on estate planning as a training that is there for cwm as of now but if we find at least uh, 25 to 30 people within this room who are looking for training as well we can run a specific batch for training as well it's a 50 hours of training for estate planning we do so we can run a specific batch for uh, Uh, you know for you on the estate planning as well because uh, uh, they come from a legal background and they are busy with it. but for you it's a need now so they are all into that business for you it's a need to add value and the quicker we do the quicker we get into the business so that training will help you to do the business quickly so uh, yeah any questions from them on anything on yes sir okay uh, see I don't know what they paid for the program. Frankly, uh, excuse us, uh, uh, gentlemen and the lady, for the if the pricing might be different. But since we uh, all are here for a special offer, uh, the price for the program is twenty nine thousand plus GST. But for today, people who are registered for today and yesterday for the event, we are offering this for twenty five thousand rupees plus GST. As a token of amount, you can book this program today just by paying two thousand rupees. and later it uh, the whatever the balance amount is uh, depend do we also have a emi option so we also have a emi option you can choose that also as a emi option uh, later for making the complete payment so that the emi option can be taken at your end so that is one for uh, training fees so training fees the regular fees is 25000 rupees but for offer price here we are charging only 15000 rupees plus gst for the complete training so it's going to cost you some total if i say 25000 plus 15000 40000 plus gst against the price of 25000 and a 29000 plus gst uh, i think you would like to add something right so dimple actually is the business head for american academy she takes care of the certification i'm more of a corporate sales guy so she is the best person to answer on the certification pricing the course curriculum the experience the support everything she will explain thank you thank you good morning everyone there is no noise there is no voice is too much of estate planning we are doing good morning thank you for the response so you know since yesterday we have been talking about markets and now estate planning so i think a new concept is introduced to you since yesterday how many of you heard about estate planning you know before attending and coming to this convention let's be honest let's be honest so you have you haven't heard or you have heard okay so now you knew about estate planning even before coming here did you take a baby step a uh, step you know did you take a first step to do something about it how many of you think that it is important and i should do something about it let's raise hands okay now a very general and a common question how many of you already have your will in place how many of you have wills in place two only two three four okay f f you have will in place sir okay okay five i think there are around uh, 150 plus 150 to 200 audience right and the number is 4 isn't it shocking to all of us and this is a room which is full of financial advisors and let's go to masses who do not know the language of money and finance what will this number will be i mean am i able to make some sense am i able to relate that how important it is and this is the uh, lack of awareness as many of you were already saying you know so there are many things we know that we don't know but the bigger issue is we don't know what we don't know 
so because we never knew about it so i will not take much time you know on deliberating on the concept of estate planning since the stalwarts are already there and here they are talking about it so we are talking about a program called charter trust and estate planner and i think to pay this price for your life and your client's life it's not much do you think it's a it's a, it's a it's a good price that you are paying or it's nothing to save life or to gift of life or gift a uh, gift for life that we were saying do you think the price is high to save life for somebody i want responses see it's our business we are we are in the ecosystem right we are upskilling and you are uh, giving life to your customers and investors so do you think it's a price that you you are uh, okay to pay to save life for somebody yes or no right so chartered trust and estate planner is the certification which is offered by american academy usa so uh, you know about who is afm india we we talked about afm india this certification you are going to get from afm us directly so the certification would be issued by us so it there are certain benefits i would talk and then i will come to fee straight away so ctep is the only certification in india which talks about succession planning inheritance and estate planning all are these synonyms right so i'm using it because you can relate it better now second thing is that once you get this charter holder this charter professional certification you will be able to use it on your social media or and your visiting cards and website all of you have your visiting cards yes. do you have it in front of you right now yes. how many of you are visiting cards right now can you please take it out small small exercise sorry but let, let's see okay so when you are taking out this uh, can somebody read what is written on your business card can you two three people i want two three people to yeah please yeah perfect okay so what is the qualification you have mentioned yeah uh, i am a postgraduate in marketing okay and also financial management financial management okay these two qualifications right okay anyone else please would like to read yeah thank you yeah so be loud be loud Yeah, so people want to know. Yeah, your name. Uh, I'm Shivani. Okay. Uh, my job title, my name, my qualification, my education, my email ID, and mobile number. Okay. What is the qualification you have mentioned, sir? I'm a BSc, BBA, CIA, BBA, BBA. Great. Any other? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, you have not mentioned qualification. Just put wealth enabler and AMP certificate. All right. Any other? Yeah, please, sir. I have my name, logo, and uh, certification like I have done a master of business management. I have mentioned my qualification earlier, and the company information that I have. Okay, you said CWM, right? Okay, you are chartered wealth manager already by AFM. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so the basic idea about this small exercise is not to make you know feel bad about anything or anybody. But why I asked is this: Why do we put the qualification on the business card? Why do we put it? What is the objective? And that answers it, right? We are putting the qualification on our business card because business card is something which shows who are we, what do we offer. right and this designation that we are talking about today is nothing but a knowledge certification and credibility so we at least we are on the same page and we believe that knowledge the qualification that we are telling because we want to tell the world world you know that we are qualified enough to help you with your needs and the services that we are talking about right we are giving it to you because of our experience or qualification right so afm makes a small attempt to reach out to professionals like you to build credibility in your profession 
so this ctp qualification will definitely be able to add you know uh, you can you will be able to put it on social media or uh, your profiles your websites and things like that so ctp is basically a designation which is going to help you now the fees and the offerings and the videos and the training we were discussing the fees as mr vyas said it is 29000 plus gst for the registration so if you are gst certified we can issue those uh, invoices to you and you can take the benefit 29000 but people who are sitting in the room he said 25000 and you can uh, book your fees by paying emi and the training is already part of this certification only for people who are here so mr vyas sorry without taking your approval and permission i am giving this uh, to you so yes we do charge separately for training but right now because we feel this is the place where we are creating awareness and we should also be supportive enough so i am not taking the approval of mr deepak and mr vyas who is the management here and the directors but from my side so training is a part of the fees that you are going to pay so that is the biggest gift i can give it you know being here and you will get around videos of 50 hours which will talk about everything so when since yesterday he, you know you attended one hour session or two hour session i think you could have some takeaways imagine in 50 hours trust me trust me i can i can you can you know it is getting recorded you can mark it your thought process will change and you will be able to make impact in your life and your client's life this is from my side so you will have your books books again comes at a separate cost but we were we are including books for you this is the uh, combo that we thought from delhi only we'll give it to uh, you know we'll give it to you the books thing so books are uh, part of it lms is there then the training is there so it's a complete set you get from us and the material comes in a very very easy structured way it comes with a detailed content it comes with ppt of every chapter so there are people right as uh, mr and ms bhavya and mr kiran said because of time constraint you know having your families and professional life you're not able to devote so much of time then you can go through the ppts which are there so ppts will make your life easy ppts are there practice questions are there videos is there and then we have academic support also so end to end support we give it to you and i will add further here sir that we were talking about next gen so i will throw some light here can i use this right so next gen is a company which offers estate planning solution so when we started this estate planning education in india 8 years back people asked us now we are qualified estate planners like uh, we have to here how we can offer this to our clients tomorrow right so the membership that we have given complimentary to you is you can join estate uh, this company called next gen whatever case you have we will do a joint consultation for your client so you learn estate planning through this certification but tomorrow you said i am not well versed and prepared and you know the best person to give advice to my client we at next gen will do joint consultation for your client when you are member for us and we will not charge so tomorrow if your client wants a trust we will charge for making a trust but not advising that what is the right way to plan your estate i hope i am clear enough till here so i think this is it from my side if you would like to add something so exam yeah so exam is very important question thank you for the question i missed it so it's a single exam you will have to give so once you register with us there is one exam you will have to pass we will help you prepare for the examination it's a multiple choice question no negative marking exam fees is 4000 rupees so 4000 rupees is examination fees you pay when you write the exam right Oh, okay. No, so you, yeah. So you, what you have to do is, when you want to renew your certificate, you pay us hundred dollar. You don't have to write the exam again. We ask you for a very basic requirement that, like the event that we are doing, we do a lot of activities. We just want you to involve yourself in those activities, and we renew your certificate. It is valid for one year. You have to renew whenever you wish to renew. You have to yes, renew it every year. Hundred dollar, yeah, hundred, hundred dollar, yes. So hundred dollar is the renewal cost. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, so twenty-five thousand plus GST, the examination fees, and hundred dollar. So twenty-five plus four is twenty-nine. Twenty-nine plus eight is uh, thirty-seven, right? So that is a net cost you have to pay. Thirty-seven plus GST, including everything. But right Training now you only have to pay twenty-five thousand plus GST. For that today, the booking amount is two thousand. The exam fees you have to pay once you appear for the examination, and once you pass the examination. 
the 100 USD certification to the later state. So upfront right now 2000, 25,000, balance 23,000 can be converted into EMI. That will be the model of payment. I think three EMIs? How many? Yeah, up to six months you can avail. Six months. Zero cost EMI for six months we are giving you. No cost. Yeah, no cost. No EMI. cost EMI. Across India we have. Across so we India have with Pearson view. All right. So first I'll answer on exam centers. We have 5,000 test centers. You can go to any nearest center and write it. Even if you are in India, Chennai, Bombay, wherever, in India or outside India, you can write exam from anywhere. We have test centers across the world, number one. Number two, examination. The moment you register, you can write to, you can choose to write exam anytime you are prepared. So anyone can write three, three months, six months, up to one year, you can write exam anytime, up to one year. So the moment you register, you will be getting a one year of time. As per your preparation, convenience, availability, and flexibility, you can choose to write any time. So, yeah. Sorry? AFM board, you want to know about? Yeah. Okay. And how do you want, how do you from India is related to that? Related to? How, how are you related to the AFM board? Okay. US. So, yeah, so we represent Academy called American Academy of Financial Management. We are from AFM India, having head office in Delhi. We are the Indian chapter of AFM US. So we have a global CEO, Professor George Mendes, and we are all working under the same umbrella. AFM US have offices in 17 countries. So we are spread across in more than 150 countries having 3 lakh certificates. So there are already 3 lakh people who have taken various certifications from AFM and they are working in more than 150 countries. We have offices in 17 countries. India is one of the offices of AFM US. We are the Indian chapter. And the certification are centralized from US no matter from which country you are doing it. I would like Mr. Vyas to offer, uh, you know, answer this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got your question. So he's a CFP himself. That is so why you're I'm saying CFP India is different from CFP US? Huh. F name of the body is FPSB. Yeah, name of the body which offers CFP is FPSB. So, okay, so you're asking for the CFP standard board which is in USA and FPSB. So, their structure is a little different, I tell you. CFP standard boards works in USA, rest of the world works with the FPSB. That's the structure they have. In AFM, we have AFM USA, which have their own offices across 17 countries globally. We have more than 50,000 chartered wealth managers and 3 lakh plus certificates for various certifications. And our every certification, so there is a difference between a real, when you say global certification, Ours is a global certification, how do we claim that? Our certification comes from AFM USA only and directly from AFM USA. In case of CFP, your CFP is issued by the CFP India body earlier. Recent change which has come, which comes from FPSB uh, US, but there is a problem. I tell you what and why. With FPSB certification though coming from US, when you go to US for CFP, you know, as a claiming that I am a CFP, you will re-enter into a other, you have to uh, reappear for additional examination, which is almost all the examinations, because to verify that, you can go to FPSB US website, you put a country from where I am a CFP holder, and you also put a drop down, there are two drop downs. Second drop down says, put a drop down in which country you want to go and work. So then you will find out that most of the, whatever you have done in India, is not qualified to work as a CFP in the other country. So you have to do there. But with the CWM, when you're done from CWM from AFM India, you travel anywhere in the world. You don't have to enter into any other additional qualification because we also touch on international taxation and international estate planning in our CWM program. That's the thing I wanted to Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so just to add to this, as you rightly mentioned, there is no cross-border examination. So once you go to any country, you can practice your current profession in the other country. And the beauty of this is in the CTP certification, the six modules Mr. Kiran was referring, there is one module on international trust structures. So we are not only talking about Indian trust structures, estate planning, one module which is talking about global structures also. 
so which if you have nri clients yesterday somebody asked you know how can i acquire nri clients so that will also be a plus plus here in this certification yeah it's an online examination multiple choice question 3 Sorry? hours examination you have to score 50% so 50% is the passing and there is no negative marking on the spot you get the result uh, you asked a question yeah center you have to go to the center cwm versus ctp cw includes certain part of estate planning but that will not make you an expert on estate planning so if you do cwm you learn on all the asset classes including your debt equity and mf insurance we also touch on uh, rather rather cover very nicely on the uh, pms and aif but and real estate for that matter but when you are looking for estate planning to run as a business see uh, let's understand the basic genesis where we start where you started saying that on the visiting card when you write your a ctp certification when you go to a doctor and you say he is writing md or for example when you see a person writing a ca or a fca there is a difference right similarly once you write a cwm you will be treated more on the investment guy the investment advisory services when you write ctp as well then you will be treated more on the expert on the estate planning yeah yeah all so afm offers all whatever certification global in nature comes from afm us right correct right i think that's a very valid question when we started uh, afm almost uh, 12 years back i have a background just let me sh share you on 30 seconds with my background i come from fpsb i worked 5 years in fpsb earlier then i came to afm and i knew the challenges which were there currently in india many people have done their cfp but they never renew it so we didn't want it same problem in india for the cwm certification but if we see globally be it cfa cwm cfp all there are global uh, annual charges for the certification that's how the professional certification world works globally but to answer the value part that what you get on the value part from the uh, cwm so we have our four conferences which have us uh, across the india every year now so bombay being one chennai like yesterday only we, we did it then in bangalore we did it then calcutta we did it. so we have conferences across the uh, globe we give a preferred pricing so normally uh, we call it as a afm family or a non family so somebody who is a, a family like you are a cwm or a ctp certificate you get a better pricing so compared to a non family member outside the family so for example non family is paying 2000 you are paying 1500 for the same conference so that's one price benefit which we pass on to our family members as a certificate number one number two we have a club called afm finance club now uh, please understand appreciate for you in this profession you need to continuously upgrade your knowledge one is a program where you are learning your skills in a structured way what is happening in the industry what industry leaders are thinking like directors ceos sales head uh, the fund manager cios of various amcs and the banks and the uh, broking houses in this afm finance club we have many benefits just to showcase one or two we do every month two sessions from industry leaders who come on the digital platform it's a digital because we have 6000 members in this afm finance club across india so we do two sessions every month and those sessions are free for afm finance club members so we help you to continuously upgrade and learn with this learning engagement platform through afm finance club plus there are other uh, benefits also in the afm finance it's a proper uh, finance club which we are running you get a free membership being a certificate you get the free membership of that where the value for which is 5000 rupees plus gst which we charge to the anybody who is coming out of the non family so there are two plans 3500 and 5000 plus gst we offer that free of cost to our certificates so that's the value we replicate but that's a discounted price if you really ask for the worth it is more than 15000 rupees what we actually uh, give it back to the uh, distributor any anybody who have done our certification anything else which you like to add on this uh, yeah so i just wanted to say uh, that a very valid point when you renew your certification you want some value right so renewal means that you are learning something you're getting something and you're connected with the body 
and he rightly said that we are doing these kind of conferences we do around four conferences a year which are which are fixed right and in between we also do certain additional conferences as per the requirement like last we did in hyderabad which was off our four conventions then the afm finance club yeah we are doing a lot of sessions in afm finance club we are even talking issues like kyc or even civil score or maybe we are even teaching you ppt you know so lot of advisors approach us and say they are you know they are let's say they they want more knowledge on making ppt because clients these days want ppt for example so we do sessions on topics which are even not related to our curriculum but we think are that they are good for the welfare of our uh, you know students so we do many sessions and yes we will give you value against the certification renewal that you are paying us so this is what i want to sum it up yeah sure so i think uh, uh, sir again thank you for the question because a lot of people asked, yesterday approached me and said uh, dimple what certification we should do cwm or ctep so first is we should upskill whatever you do either you are coming here and learning to this convention or you are going on internet reading something or attending some session or doing some program these programs give you a structured knowledge right now cwm as sir also said that it talks about all the investments all mutual fund even robo advisory we have put in recently we have included fintech and robo advisory also so we try and understand all your pain points working in the mfd community and we try to include everything in our certification if you do cwm and ctp nothing like it that's the best combination you can have as an advisor trust me and you will value and cherish all your life now if you do as a combo yes we can even uh, give you as a package and we can talk about discounts further because then there is a cwm fees also which will again be similar to this cost so around 30000 it will cost uh, for cwm registration also but when you will do as a combo we will definitely uh, you know talk more on that and we can talk about the uh, combo at the booth outside you can please do uh, the registration with the minimum amount of 2000 rupees today so now i think this is we have discussed enough can can you raise hands how many of you are interested in taking up the certification please please ct CWM, yeah. All right. I'll 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 just again. I'll reframe it for you. Sure. So, sir, what we can do is for the combination because otherwise it will confuse other people who are not looking for combo. We'll talk about it at the FM booth, right? So, right now you're all clear with the CTP fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how many of you are interested for CTP right now here? estate planning you want the fees for estate planning uh, sir we can have now one to one questions yeah, uh, at the exhibition and for you actually and we can also do the registration there for the program it's not a problem we answer your question first at the uh, because there is another uh, gentleman who has come from uh, uh, double take he is also waiting for the session i think we already taken half an hour of his timeline so how much he will cut short because we will lessen the value of the next session if we keep on you know uh, running this q and a session yeah yeah we'll do that number 1 we have talked about estate planning to upskill because the concept today is know your business grow your business so now let's move on to increase your business through the technology for our next session anything else before this oh, so i would like you, to thank mr kiran and ms bhavya for Bhavana. sharing their wonderful views can we have a round of applause for the you know them coming up here thank you thank you thank you so much sir yes sir thank you thank you break 5 minutes break no we problem can, we can do it so but genuinely take a 5 minutes break otherwise the lunch will be delayed so and i don't want anything for you to miss out from the next here session here also you will have lot of things to learn and apply in your business come back in 5 minutes yep can we start are we ready for the second session to come i think the first session was quite a bit energetic and you know a lot of questions we have seen on the estate planning i am happy for it it's always good that when you you know ask questions for yourself now the second topic 
we are going to start on how actually you should be able to look at the new ways for the client acquisition for your client market for your marketing client servicing so all those things in the next upcoming topic we are going to talk about that how whatsapp in today's world which has become the nerve of each and every individual maybe not only the mutual fund distributor most of you also communicate with lot of things with your clients on whatsapp on day to day basis that's the easiest mode of communication today which has become in the industry so today we are going to talk on that how what we can use whatsapp for our business and the topic today on which we are going to talk is revolutionize your business growth with whatsapp business api i have mr shivam mittal and i would like to invite him on the stage he is a co-founder and head of business of double tech mr shivam is a whatsapp automation and marketing expert by passion and profession having held more than 15000 plus businesses across the india in b2b and b2c model globally with the success of whatsapp strategies to unlock the business growth double tick is one of the leading brands like oh sorry double tick is one of the leading whatsapp partner helping brands like tata aig jrt jewelers malabar gold and diamonds ikra zaidus pharma and many many more across 145 countries with intelligent whatsapp enablement and commerce shivam is going to talk on the topic we just discussed today focusing on that how this 2024 is coming and how this makes sense for mfds in india and just to share afm india has also tied up with double tick to enable this whatsapp api for the mutual fund distributors and rii in india how this can get benefited for the mutual fund distributors we at afm very strongly believes that disruption is only the way for success and that's how i think the first session was quite a close bit to the disruption discussion we just had on estate planning and i'm sure this next discussion is the same way we are going to feel now for the whatsapp api i now again welcome mr shivam mittal on the dais to talk on this topic please thank you shivam hello chennai vanakam chennai super excited and thrilled to be here at uh, know your business and grow your business first of all uh, i would like to congratulate each and every one of you all on uh, having this great extravaganza of two days yesterday was full of learning and uh, growth opportunities exposure and what not and today yet again with the topic that we had uh, i see mr deepak and mr vyas just nailed it on the topic with the uh, estate planning and uh, not coming from a financial background i would like to say that i am convinced to get my estate planning and right to so uh, thank you so much for all those learnings now i think a very important and indeed a very important subject matter for us as a business entrepreneur right there on that screen do you see this logo this green logo the logo of whatsapp how many times do we see that logo every day almost every 5 minutes yes. every 10 minutes so <laughs> yes it's like every time i unlock my mobile phone the the, the first thing organically that i do is i i open my whatsapp and i check my chats right from the morning to the evening some a gentleman says the very first thing we do in the morning is we unlock our phone and we look at whatsapp and uh, the last thing that we do while we end our day before going to the bed is we look at our whatsapp and that's how we end our day and now for all of us as a business entrepreneur today this session is going to be the most awaited of all why because first of all an individual we cannot imagine our lives without whatsapp secondly as a business entrepreneur as a business owner today there is a lot there is a lot that can be done on whatsapp today and we are not aware of it and it is time for us to grow nurture and get exposed to all the possibilities 
because the future of business growth is going to be relationship led and conversational and it will only happen on whatsapp in india why because our customers do not open sms and emails they do not take calls but they are there on whatsapp so now i think with this let's take this quick opportunity of moving ahead a quick introduction about uh, myself my partner and the company uh, again uh, a very warm welcome to all of you all in the session my name is shivam mithal and i'm the co-founder of double tech uh, as an individual i am a whatsapp automation and marketing expert by passion and by profession uh, i've consulted more than 9500 businesses across 145 different industries Uh, a few brands that I'm closely consulting here in Chennai would includes on the like of a Casa Grande developer or a GRT jeweler, uh, and a lot of other uh, businesses. Uh, speaking about my partner, Mr. Deepak Bhagchandani comes from a human-computer interaction background. He was there in the United States working with Amazon, and uh, his superpower is basically building easy solutions for complicated problems. And uh, collectively, our mission here at Double Tick is to help we have a very simple straightforward mission my mission is to help small and medium global businesses implement easy to use technology that can help you achieve impactful and desirable outcomes now this is what i thrive for in my life you must have probably uh, seen my face on instagrams facebooks or linkedins of the world uh, i take these whatsapp automation and strategy master classes and uh, and the reason why i do all of that is to cultivate this mission Uh, as a company, Double Tick is a conversational commerce company. We help businesses do customer engagement on WhatsApp. We basically help businesses in growing, retaining, engaging, and monetizing customers on WhatsApp on mobile. That's what the company does. We are backed up by InfoEdge and Bnex Ventures, so we are an institutionally funded company. We have raised a couple of million dollars from them. just to tell you a little bit about the impact that we have been able to drive so far as an organization right now we have tied up with afm to disrupt the way customer engagement is happening in the financial market industry right having said that so far what we have been able to do is we are powering i mean i'm proud to tell you on this platform right now that we are powering about 100 million or conversations on whatsapp across 50 in plus businesses you see you, you must have seen those green tick numbers on whatsapp nowadays you know a lot of messages you get from amazons and mintras and tata igs of the world that technology is basically powered by us we are doing that for almost 15000 businesses across 145 countries spread across 110 different industries there are about 18000 odd active whatsapp chatbots today that we are powering so you go on a green tick whatsapp number and you see there is a chatbot talking to you like a human being is probably powered by us today and here we are with mr vyas with mr deepak to look at how can we revolutionize customer engagement for the mfds and the iras of india so now moving ahead uh, a few brands that we closely work with you know you have zydas and malabar and sabbe sachi and grts of the world uh, moving ahead what is the goal with the session okay very straight forward simple goal my only goal coming here to chennai all the way from mumbai is to ensure that in this one hour session you get a curated whatsapp strategy for your business that helps you understand how can you use whatsapp for customer acquisition how can you use whatsapp for customer engagement and how can you use whatsapp for monetizing your customers by upselling cross selling and by closing them faster how can you increase your sales efficiency how can you increase your marketing efficiency using whatsapp that's the goal of this one hour session now of course we have a significant number of mfds that we are already powering we are going to look at some case studies as well uh this session is going to be more like an interactive session i don't i i'm not here to share any gang uh i want this to be as interactive as possible so at any given point of time you have any questions feel free to raise your hand and i'll love to uh, answer your question so i think quickly discussing the agenda uh, okay we have got introduced i've been talking to a lot of people since yesterday uh, as we progress we'll get to know each other even better the first point and the subject matter as a business owner why are we supposed to focus on whatsapp as a mfd as a ira 
क्या जरूरत है व्हाट्सएप पे फोकस करने की वॉट इज द नीड फॉर एस टू फोकस ऑन व्हाट्सएप इज समथिंग दैट वी गुड अंडरस्टैंड देन वी गुड अंडरस्टैंड हाउ व्हाट्सएप ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम हैज बिकम अ बून एंड अ बेन एट द सेम पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वॉट आर द लिमिटेशन ऑफ करेंट एवेतार ऑफ व्हाट्सएप दैट आर बेसिकली ब्लॉकिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ आर बिजनेस बिकॉज टूडे बींग इन इंडिया आर बिजनेस इज टेक्निकली रनिंग इन व्हाट्सएप यू नो वी आर वी आर इन अ व्हाट्सएप फर्स्ट इकोनॉमी वाई बिकॉज आई मीन इफ वी वर इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स आर कस्टमर्स वुड प्रोबेबली रीड आर ईमेल्स बट फॉर्चुनेटली और अनफॉर्चुनेटली वेर इन इंडिया एंड कस्टमर्स डू नॉट रीड आर ईमेल्स इफ वी वर इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स कस्टमर्स वुड प्रोबेबली रीड आर एस एम एस एस बट हेयर इन इंडिया दैट डजेंट हैपन एनी मोर ऑल द वे पॉसिबल मीन्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन टूडे बॉइल्स डाउन टू व्हाट्सएप बिकॉज द कस्टमर ओपन व्हाट्सएप सो वॉट आर द लिमिटेशन ऑफ व्हाट्सएप टूडे दैट आर ब्लॉकिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ आर बिजनेस देन वी गुड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द डिफरेंट फॉर्मैट्स ऑफ व्हाट्सएप अवेलेबल टूडे आई मीन टेक्निकली एज अ बिजनेस ओनर वी टेक्निकली नो देर आर ओनली टू व्हाट्सएप व्हाट्सएप नॉर्मल एंड व्हाट्सएप फॉर बिजनेस बट देर इज मोर टू इट देर इज अ लॉट मोर टू इट सो वी गुड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देन वी आर गुड टू डीप ड्राइव इन टू द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ व्हाट्सएप बिजनेस एपीआई हाउ कैन व्हाट्सएप बिजनेस एपीआई रेवल्यूशनाइज आर बिजनेस एज अ एम एफ डी और आई आर ए एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू कम टू द कोर यूज केसेस ऑफ व्हाट्सएप बिजनेस एपीआई फॉर एम एफ डीज हाउ कैन यू यूज इट टू ग्रो योर बिजनेस बाई थ्री एक्स फोर एक्स हाउ कैन यू यूज इट फॉर इंक्रीजिंग योर सेल्स एफिशियंसी बाई डबल ट्रिपल और हाउ कैन यू यूज इट फॉर मार्केटिंग योर प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेज इन द मोस्ट एफिशियंट मैनर लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट वी आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू डू अ लाइव प्रैक्टिकल हैंड्स ऑन सो आई एम एक्चुअली गोइंग टू शो यू हाउ दिस इंटायर थिंग वर्क and then we are going to look at the implementation process so this is the agenda for the day and uh, because we are running short on time i'm going to keep it really crisp and really to the point and with this i think i have only one single question to ask before i begin are you guys thrilled and excited to kick start this session if yes then say yes yes perfect so moving ahead with the first topic why what is the reason for us to focus on whatsapp see straight forward i mean we have already discussed that you know we day in and day out we are on whatsapp and there is one thing common you know one thing common amongst all of us and amongst all of our customers it is not you and i looking at whatsapp all day long this is exactly what our customer also does he is also there just like you also opening whatsapp with his eyes in the morning or also looking at whatsapp as the last thing and with this my friends i would like to tell you that the product that you call whatsapp is not anymore just a mobile application it is the world's highest engagement and attention platform ever built on this mother earth it has a open rate of 98% which is mind boggling you shoot a message to 1 lakh people and the next thing you know is 98000 of them have already read it it has a response time of 90 seconds you shoot a message globally it this stats come from statistics uh, statistica wherein the average whatsapp chat gets a revert in 90 seconds that's about 1.5 minutes now you compare it with sms and emails the other way of form uh, the other formats of co customer communication there's no com there's no comparison i mean you look at the open rate smss are hovering at about 40% in india this number is even worst this is the covid and then emails are at 20 30% you compare the response time it takes days and hours to get a response on other solutions and same goes for the click through rate which is basically whenever you share a link with someone with any of your customers on whatsapp and stuff like that so moving ahead another very important reason for us to focus on whatsapp one is of course the uh, the highest engagement platform in the world second very simple reason is that today as a business entrepreneur here in india one thing that is very important for us to conduct business to conduct calls is to have one on one personal connect with our customers you know that one on one assisted personal connect that one on one consultation that we give to our customers is exactly what differentiates us is exactly what matters because you consult your customer one on one you give them that vip experience you give them that hand holding and that is how customer makes a decision with you that is how the customer goes ahead with you now what happens is when you talk about running your business digitally i mean digitally when you say that okay i'll probably create a website and run my business the world changes there why because when you go to a website there is no one to handhold you and consult you it's just a generic page same for all 
it's like going to a grt.com wherein there are 2 lakh products listed but there is no one to handhold you and consult you will you end up buying a 5 lakh rupee necklace no you will only do that when you walk into the store because there is someone handholding you so the point that i'm trying to make here is that over a period of time because of this reason in india we have started using whatsapp as a digital counter now whatsapp has become a digital counter like how we have our physical counter the customer sits in the front and we sit here and we kind of talk to them one on one this is exactly what we are doing on whatsapp aren't we what's do you agree with the statement that over a period of time whatsapp has become a digital counter the customer is there on the other hand we are there and we are chatting with him one on one as if he is there with us physically so the point here is that if it all whatsapp has become a digital counter the challenge is that on this digital counter wherein we want to give a vip personalized and assisted experience there are lot of limitations that are coming as a blocker in the growth of our business and this is where i say whatsapp is a boon and a bane at the rate, at the same point of time so now what are these limitations now trust me friends of course i have been speaking with about uh, 100 150 odd mfds since yesterday i have mfds that have already consulted uh, across regions like gujarat and maharashtra and also i have consulted about 10000 plus businesses across different different industries the four limitations that i am going to list in front of you are faced by all of them all of them so i want your 100% attention on the screen because this is important the first problem statement or the first limitation that we actually face is that whenever i have number of inquiries getting increased on my whatsapp the quality of response goes down the quality of response detroits i mean the the problem statement is that if today you have a team of two people three people four people in your company in your office those four people today are using four different whatsapp numbers so there are two problems first problem is that as a business owner your job is to not keep on reverting to your customers one on one on whatsapp your job is to plan strategize scale look at how are you going to grow revenue you are the business owner you are not a sales person the point that i am trying to make here is that as a business owner you have much more bigger responsibilities to take care of rather than just replying to your customers on whatsapp if you are doing that then you are not efficient and the second facet of the problem is that today you have a team of three sales people you see different whatsapp numbers and there is no audit system that helps you understand are they replying to your customers properly or not what is your sales person doing is he doing some kind of a miscommitment that is going to lead to some kind of business loss in the future for you or is he is he even talking about the products properly does he know what you sell or does or is he just wasting his time and wasting your hard earned money or is he really serious about what is he doing because you have never got an opportunity to look at how is he engaging with your customers what actually happens is you get a customer you take a screenshot of that chat you give it to your sales person and then the rest is history you don't know what happened after that you're not able to track his interaction i mean there are global businesses like tata aig i'm consulting them now tata aig tracks calls 50% of the customer engagement is happening on whatsapp and you're tracking calls what insight do you get after tracking calls i mean the thing that is happening on whatsapp remains on whatsapp no it does not come on call so the point that i'm trying to make here is that if your 50 to 70% of customer engagement is on whatsapp you got to track whatsapp so this is problem number 1 second problem very relatable to a lot of mfds is that as and when the number of inquiries increase on whatsapp it is difficult to maintain the response time today you run an ad on instagram or facebook you will get 100 people interested in mutual funds but do you have the bandwidth to engage with them one on one reply to them one on one again this problem has two facets facet number 1 as a owner of the business i literally have consulted businesses with 223300441000 chats unread on their whatsapp what are those 1000 unread chats those are 1100 opportunities the point that i am trying to make here is that there are two things again you have a sales team they are using different number you don't know what's happening there are they reverting to your customers on time or not and you know why is this important okay let's get this very straight why is this very important there is a survey conducted by salesforce 
विच इज द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट सी आर एम कंपनी विच क्लियरली से इज दैट बिजनेसिस दैट आर एबल टू रिप्लाई बैक टू अंकमिंग कस्टमर क्वेरी इन लेस देन वन आर हैव गॉट अ कन्वर्जन रेट ऑफ सेवन एक्स मोर देन अदर बिजनेस दैट टेक्स मोर देन वन आर टू रिप्लाई द पॉइंट आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक एयर इज इफ आई गिव यू एन इंक्वायरी इन दैट मूवमेंट आई एम आई एम एन इंटरेस्टेड कस्टमर नाउ इफ यू टेक टेन आवर्स और वन डे टू रिप्लाई बाय देन इधर योर कॉम्पिटिटर विल एंड अप सर्विंग मी और बाय देन आई विल प्रोबेबली लूज इंटरेस्ट सो द पॉइंट दैट आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक इज इफ यू आर टू रिप्लाई बैक टू यूर कस्टमर इन लेस देन वन आर इट विल गिव यू बेटर सेल्स एंड बेटर कन्वर्जन लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट दिस इज a major concern again that our data gets leaked in the market we are not able to safeguard our customer data from our own sales people at times from our own employees at times we have this concern that whenever our sales agent leaves our company he takes up all my database goes to my competitor and start selling my competitors services to my hard earned precious customer database do you think you are also a victim of this problem you see that data protection is a problem i mean this is a global phenomena every business has this issue that my data gets leaked and what do i do after that right and last but not the least yet another difficulty is that today i actually know my customer is on whatsapp but i can't do much about it whenever i try sending them a broadcast of my new offer services let's say today i get into estate planning now i want to tell all my 5000 total customers that have served in my lifetime i want to send them a broadcast and tell them that hey i am doing estate planning and now i am a very good estate planner i am certified by afm how do i tell them there is no way i can do that am i supposed to do that one by one it will take me ages how am i supposed to do that because when i try doing that either my number gets blocked or banned making sense i am sure you must have got your numbers blocked on or banned on whatsapp at one given point of time in your life Who all have got it blocked or banned? Can someone raise their hand? How was your experience getting it blocked? Bad, <laughs> because I mean, once the number is blocked, it's blocked, right? You can't you can't help it then, and it's a loss. So the point is that these are the limitations. So now, how do we unlock growth? How do we overcome these limitations? Is the point? Okay, can do do you think these limitations can be? overcome by this normal whatsapp for business that we are running yes or no what's your thought process how many people say yes raise your hand no normal whatsapp business no no one believes that these limitations can be overcome by normal whatsapp for business correct i mean the point is that meta or whatsapp has actually not built whatsapp for business for overcoming any of the challenge that we have discussed it's a wrong answer i mean the company has not defined it as a thought process i mean they are saying that these limitations are not supposed to be overcome by the normal whatsapp for business it's a wrong answer so do you think that can be overcome these limitations with the whatsapp bulk senders you know these 100 500 rupee Thousand rupee softwares that are prevailing in the market. Two thousand rupee you pay, you get uh, you get ability to shoot broadcast. Do you think those softwares can help you overcome these limitations? How many people believe yes? Can someone raise their hand? So everyone is saying no. That technically means. So my friends, I would like to tell you that these bulk senders are actually illegal softwares, and whenever you use them, your number gets blocked or banned. because you are actually breaching the meta commerce policy now the commerce policy says you can't use anything illegal and also for that matter even if it is illegal and you use it because in india we do a lot of things that are illegal but we still do them so the point is even if it is illegal and you use it it is illegal plus useless it is useless why because when you use it you shoot a broadcast it goes from some random number and till the time your customer shows interest that number gets blocked So the point is that you are shooting a broadcast to ten thousand customers, out of which two hundred are supposed to reply. Now those two hundred customers, by the time they are replying, your number is blocked. How are you supposed to engage with them? You are rather disengaging them. So this is another problem. Apart from that, of course, there is mismanagement of chats, and it never gets you a verified green tick badge. So the point being that now, 
how am I supposed to overcome these limitations? What is the key to unlock growth on WhatsApp? Any guesses? <laughs> okay, so my friends, the right answer is the third official version of WhatsApp and we call it the official WhatsApp business API. Yes. Now this is the third form of WhatsApp that basically helps you overcome all the limitations of normal WhatsApp. Now, so far we have heard that there are only two WhatsApps. Normal WhatsApp and WhatsApp for business. But in reality, my friends, there are three WhatsApps. Normal WhatsApp, WhatsApp for business and WhatsApp business API. Now you must have got certain questions in your mind. What is WhatsApp business API? How will it help me? Is it paid? How can I implement it? What are the benefits? You know, all those questions that are running in your mind. So first of all, I would like to tell you that WhatsApp business API is officially launched by WhatsApp. It is a 100% official solution. Secondly, what WhatsApp has actually done is, over a decade, they have realized that businesses have requirements that cannot be fulfilled by your normal version of WhatsApp. That is the reason they have launched this new technology in which they have unlocked their core messaging technology. That means that now we can integrate WhatsApp with our existing business softwares. We can, we can build our own user interface on top of WhatsApp and much more. So net net point being that now there are ultimate possibilities that can be unlocked with WhatsApp business API for Indian businesses, for MFDs, for IRAs. And in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to run you through all those possibilities. Now, before I run you through all those possibilities, I have one single question that I want to ask. And the question is, are you all thrilled and excited to look at the innovative possibilities of growing your business in 2024? If yes, then say yes and have some josh, guys. Come on. Yes, yes. Perfect. We're going to have lunch in the next one hour. Yes. One hour. <laughs> all right, all right. I was just kidding. Okay, so coming to the possibility number one, my friends, that's a verified green tick bag. We are... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up in half an hour, half an hour or so. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, the first possibility is this verified green tick batch. Uh, you must have seen a lot of companies with this green tick batch nowadays, right? So, this is the first possibility that gets unlocked with WhatsApp API. Of course, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, you must have seen GRT Jeweler or Malabar or Tata AIG or all these mutual fund AMCs using these verified green tick numbers to send you messages. And... Uh, this can only happen with WhatsApp Business API and you can also get a verified green tick for your company. So the benefit is that it gets you trust, credibility and confidence. And you know what? The most exciting part of the story is that even when, even when your customer does not have your number saved and when you shoot a broadcast message through the WhatsApp API, your company name comes there. I mean, you must have realized if a Grow AMC or a SDFC mutual fund is sending a message, then it says their name even when you do not have their number saved. Or a Mintra or an Amazon does the very similar thing with you. Correct? So that's the thing. So it shows certain level of professionalism around your brand. That's one thing. Second thing is we just realized right now, two minutes back, that because we have three, four people in our company using three, four different WhatsApp number and we don't get to track what they are doing. Now with the second possibility is that you can use one single WhatsApp number across your entire team and you actually get to see who is chatting with whom, how many chats are read, how many chats are unread. You get a con complete control over all of it. And not just that, even when your salesperson leaves your company, those customer conversations can be assigned to someone else. It can be assigned to a new agent. So think of a CRM on top of WhatsApp, a CRM that looks like WhatsApp runs like WhatsApp, but can do everything that your normal WhatsApp can't do. So now we are saying that you can assign chats within WhatsApp to different, different salespeople. You can track what they are chatting about. Not only just that, you can in fact do number masking. So the point is that your salesperson does not get to see your customer's number, only name. So he can engage, but he can't, he can't basically steal the number like that. And with this coming to the third possibility, which is basically integrating WhatsApps with your current softwares. Let's say integrating it with Google Sheet. So let's say if you have a, if you have a lead in Google Sheet, you change the lead status, a message get, gets triggered on WhatsApp. Or integrating WhatsApp with calling CRM. If you call a customer and they don't pick up a call, then a message can be sent on WhatsApp. 
things like that. So now you can integrate WhatsApp with existing business software, birthday, greetings, automated reminders for SIP and whatnot. A lot can be done in terms of integrating WhatsApp and not just that, you can now build WhatsApp chatbots that will work for you as a human being 24-7 without taking any leave. You can in fact integrate WhatsApp with chat GPT and, and I'm genuinely not kidding, it's possible. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that this is another possibility. And with this, we have last but not the least the most important possibility which is basically bulk broadcasting. That you can now shoot a broadcast to unlimited people without getting blocked. Yes, you have an Excel sheet of let's say 10,000 customers who have probably engaged with you in some format previously. Now you want to send them a broadcast saying that, hey, I am doing real estate, I am doing estate planning. You know, you want to send them a broadcast you can now do that on WhatsApp and you get this live analytics. You actually get to see how many people the chat got delivered to, how many of them read, replied and whatnot. What do you think about these possibilities, Vyasji? No, 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 it runs on cloud. Absolutely not. This runs completely on cloud, so you can basically, you, actually you don't even have to save their number. You can, you can simply import an Excel on the desktop version and shoot a broadcast. Or you can integrate this with Google Sheet. So you can basically put the numbers on Google Sheet and shoot a broadcast. And uh, it has nothing to do with storage basically. Yeah, but this is not normal WhatsApp, right? This is like WhatsApp business APIs. Of course, those concerns are taken care of that, you know, storage is not a problem. You can use it on Android, iOS, desktop, and you can shoot up broadcast messages too. In fact, I mean, not astonishingly, another very important thing is that you can actually shoot a message to 12,000 people in a minute. In 60 seconds, you can shoot a message to 12,000 people. Or you can basically shoot a message to 7.2 lakh odd customers in a matter of an hour. So that's the blazing fast speed it brings to the table. Yeah, coming to you guys. Brother, I think this question I should ask them, but you asking me. <laughs> so how do you think that um, this WhatsApp API it can actually change our world of, uh, you know, reaching out to the clients or engaging with the clients? What's your thought on this? After knowing this, the limitations we always knew, but the possibilities I think now we know about and this new thing which is there as a WhatsApp API, can this be a blessing tool for us in this given challenging time to reaching out the clients? Can this change our uh, way of doing business? Can you think it will help us to reach out to our clients in a better way, in an increased number of, you know, uh, the uh, touch points which we make our real clients? What do you think about it? And see, uh, let me put it to you a different way. What are the different types of communication you do with your clients? One could be with your existing, see there are two types of clients in a very simpler term, existing client and a new client or a prospective client. New Correct. client, when I say is a prospective client. So there are certain things which you like to do with your existing client and there are certain things which you like to do for your new clients which you want to acquire, right? What are the things currently which you are doing right now with your existing clients? Let me have one by one so that we will understand this how WhatsApp API in the real time can help us to do those things in a maybe better way so that and obviously we have an expert here so he can guide us on that. So what currently communications you are doing with your existing clients? Sending birthday wishes. Sending? Birthday wishes. Okay. Reminders of SIP reminders, okay, to Great. That's a brilliant idea. Success, success stories, stories, basically as an MFD success stories, there how many clients we have made the success stories, achieve, have them achieve their goals. Ha, customer customer success. success stories. The how many of the clients we have helped them to achieve their goals basically. Their capital appreciation could be one goal. Correct. Correct. So one is changes in the regulatory changes regulatory or changes, those new policies, new apprehensions and stuff. Marketing, uh, marketing again can be two again. One for the new client, for the existing client also. 
so yeah so it's not that we once we have done one sip and it's over it's always the existing clients who gives a keep on money to us based on the business we do market Correct. updates market updates that's also important to engage customers yeah anything else sorry product posters so postings basically videos very important yeah obviously uh, as per the forbes report which i shared yesterday also the nowadays the videos is the one actually people are liking to see rather than the text and all or the infographics rather than again a simple text to read and all yeah correct progress your your success story you are saying yeah it's very important very very important rather because the client should always feel that you are in the safe hands and that's how your social proofing builds client testimonials right now tell me this is something when you say the existing client how many of you are actually using whatsapp for all these things or are we using whatsapp firstly for maybe few of these things okay if i am wrong tell me somewhere second if i may ask you that while using whatsapp how many of your clients actually reply you on your whatsapp do you know that how many have seen your uh, because there are people in the whatsapp they have an option to you know change that option that unread so if you cannot if they do not allow you you can also you cannot see that whether they have read your message and there is no dashboard for you to basically see to, right I to mean, see that you, have, that to you go, have to go one on one and see you have to go one and one that actually this client who i am i am looking to have more business do i really have, every time i have to go back and check that whether the, my message has been seen is there a reply my whole day can go in that as an operational purpose is only right so how whatsapp api is different to you know cater this issues or how we can use whatsapp api in a more systematic manner that i think uh, we would like yeah, to hear from absolutely. you absolutely so i think uh, we have curated some use cases so uh, basically there are some few smart mutual fund distributors across the country who are already using this technology to grow their business manifold there are success stories and there are validations and social proofs of the fact now today we have to take this call as a owner of a business or as a business entrepreneur that do we want to stay with the same mentality that we had 10 years back because things that we were doing 10 years back aren't working today the times are changing there is evolution happening across and specifically with covid-19 pandemic there is so much digitization that we can't even think of right so the point is that we want to be the same person who we were 10 years back or do we want to revolutionize our thought processes and right here i'm going to share across some use cases of mutual fund distributors that are proven and businesses are using these use cases to grow their business 2x 3x net net the point is that how can i grow my sales 3x with whatsapp tell me that solution and that solution is right in front of you the first way of using whatsapp business api to grow your business is bulk broadcasting on whatsapp to leads that you have collected from various sources like exhibition conclaves instagram facebook social references you have so many leads that you generate from so many sources but the point is that are you able to engage with those potential customers again and again are you able to engage with them constantly you got 1000 leads but you were able to convert only 20 out of them how can we make this 20 go to 40 is the question because if i am able to increase that conversion count from 20 to 40 i am technically talking about doubling my business right so that's the whole process and and what we are saying is that using bulk broadcasting on whatsapp for leads that you collect from different different sources you can engage with them better you can have a better outreach basically right now what happens is we get those leads and we are basically not able to engage with them because they don't take our calls we try calling them we whatsapp them once or twice because it's very difficult and we leave that database as it is that's one thing and secondly bulk broadcasting and staying on top of your existing customers mind for upsells cross sells new updates new things that you are bringing in 
and what not is the second way of using WhatsApp. Now this is how typically MFDs are using. I am going to share across a case study as well. So that's one use case, bulk broadcasting on WhatsApp. The second use case is using chatbots for lead qualification and drip campaigning on WhatsApp. I have seen a lot of cases in which you know whenever a lead comes you have to ask so many questions to the customer. Are they interested in mutual fund? Are they interested in insurance? What is the type of you know mutual fund they are looking at? So many things that we have to ask. And typically that's a repetitive question. We have to do that for all the customers. And we don't even know who is our serious customer. You know we don't even know who is our serious buyer. So using chatbots, I'm going to show you a live chatbot of, uh, of a MFD based in Valsad uh, Gujarat. Prime Investments, I am going to show his bot and uh, that guy has got some crazy chatbot built on WhatsApp in which automatically a lead comes from his website or from different sources and the chatbot does the lead qualification and only qualified leads are then getting assigned to his sales agent meaning that he is able to increase the salesperson's efficiency by 3x that technically means if one salesperson was able to engage with two good customers in a day now he can engage with six good customers in a day if you are able to increase your sales team's efficiency by 3x, that technically means that you are able to increase your business efficiency by 3x. That's the logic, right? Or you, and for that matter, even if you are a one-man army, let's say if you are the one going and fighting the entire battle, then you need to increase your efficiency. It's like you are going in a battle but you don't have a sword. How are you going to win it? You will, you will technically lose no, because you don't have any weapon. You need to have the right weapon to win the right battle at the right time. So that's the thing. Another thing is that you know, I mean once the customer is coming in the funnel, automatic WhatsApp messages, sequence messaging on WhatsApp should be done to keep on engaging with the potential customer until and unless that customer closes. And the third thing is we waste so much time telling the customers policies and procedures in which we have to manually intervene. All those can be done very easily using a WhatsApp chatbot. Those engagements can be done. Those things can be automated. Another use case of WhatsApp for MFDs is post sales engagement. Once the customer has paid, then what all kind of engagement should be done? So reminder bots as uh, the gentleman rightly said, reminder bots for SIP, reminder bots for policy renewals, reminder bots for different different use cases, right? Uh, renewals, SIPs, fund performance, policy maturity and whatnot. And last but not the least, your customer engagement bots for upselling, cross-selling and all of that. So this is very important another thing. And with this, I think I would like to validate the growth of Mr. Pragnesh Desai from Prime Investment Services, Valsad, Gujarat. His uh, ARN number is also listed above and we have actually helped this person increase his active customers by 100% quarter on quarter. If you look at that graph. Quarter 1 he had about 400 odd active customers, quarter 4 he had about 800 odd active customers. So the point is that how was he able to do that I will tell you. He used two particular things to smartly grow his business. He is a smart MFD. I call him the smart MFD. Why? Because first of all he used WhatsApp for lead qualification and lead engagement. I will show you his what and you will know how. And secondly, he used WhatsApp broadcasting for engaging with 15,000 customer database that he has collected over a period of time. It's not a junk database. He has not bought it from somewhere. He collected this database over a period of time and the problem that he was facing was he was not able to engage with these people. Right? Because there is no software helping you to engage with 15,000 customers. But using WhatsApp API, using our product, he basically engaged with all those customers. And month on month, his active customer count started growing. Now, of course, this guy has been selling a lot of services. He's selling mutual funds, he's selling in insurance and whatnot. The point is that end of the day, he is able to grow his business. What do you think about it? Any questions here? Yes, please. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. There's a dashboard on mobile. It's like a WhatsApp alike app. And then there's a, dex a dashboard on desktop. I'm going to show you that actually. Okay. So, theoretically, can we take backup of this 
yes you can i mean first of all you don't need to take a backup because unlike normal whatsapp chats don't delete, gets deleted here i mean let's say even your if even if your sales person tries to delete a chat let's say he did some kind of miscommunication and now he wants to delete it he can't it depends upon what role access do you have you can define different user roles so and having said that if you want to take a backup it's possible, it's possible. yeah it's possible Yes, a key account manager that can handhold you, tell you what kind of chatbots will you need, how to build these bots and stuff like that, right? See content, I mean there is a template library that we have built. Apart from that for content, I mean rather than paying to us for a content, I would request you to use ChatGPT because it's more easier. We also use ChatGPT to you know put content, so I think it's the most easiest way nowadays. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question. So uh, to answer that, uh, <coughs> uh, whosoever uh, is a part of AFM family, for example, uh, earlier we used to give that, but I think since now we are starting with WhatsApp API, the content supply of uh, different types of content, uh, we used to give customized videos, with small short videos, we used to give uh, short images. So all those things we are trying to make it available now again to our AFM Finance Club members. So once you register for the program or even you just become an AFM Finance Club, you get those content supply from AFM. So whatever you want to do on the WhatsApp uh, API to broadcast to your customers on day on day basis, we do that. Plus, uh, there is one more thing we have started uh, recently with the daily quizzes and daily, uh, I would say blog and a small article up to 500 words that you get daily from our side. So those things you can further repost for your clients as well through uh, WhatsApp or any other mediums so that they are updated on the what is happening in this world also because nobody is looking for reading so many so many big big uh, articles but up to 400 500 this is just two minute read they are happy but something going from your side brings a uh, lot of sense to them because you are sending them it is important for their knowledge so content supply will be there from AFM I think that really makes a lot of sense because uh, we are building a lot of content with the AFM on how MFDs uh, should engage with customers on WhatsApp. So now this was Mr. Pragnesh uh, Desai. And now I think with this, we are. I'm going to take this real quick moment and give you a live demo of the Double Tick app, which is the official WhatsApp business API. And uh, of course, we have partnered with Meta. We are an official WhatsApp partner, our official Meta partner, and we have built this solution in partnership with them. Think of it like a new uh, third version of WhatsApp. So my mobile screen is right in front of you and uh, right here we go. Uh, this is how my mobile screen looks like and there are two different things. Just one second. Okay. Yeah. There are two things. First of all, I have my normal WhatsApp, which is my normal WhatsApp, you know, it basically like how every one of us uh, have a normal WhatsApp here. Look at this prime board. This is Mr. Pragnesh Desai's company. Prime Investments, uh, a pioneer in providing customers with solutions that are scientific and quality prime investment services, leader with uh, certified mutual fund distribution, IRDA. He's a mutual fund distributor. Now moving ahead, I'm going to simply give you a live demo of his bot. A customer comes from his website on his WhatsApp number or probably comes from any other different source and the moment he comes there, his, jad, his chatbot gets activated. The customer has an option to select different languages. I can select language, let's say in this case I'm selecting English. The moment I select English as a language, now it has asked what in it. Typically you have to waste your time to do this again and again and again and again for your customer. Either you or your salesperson. Now we are seeing this entire thing is automated. Here if I say mutual fund, I can choose from a list of service and this is all customizable. You can build your own bot. You can build a chatbot basis your requirement. What we are saying is now, if I say mutual fund, it has got all the other options. SIP, lump sum amount, you know, financial report, valuation report, whatever I want to know about. So, like this, we can have chatbots and this is on the front end your customer number, right? The, the number that your customer is engaging with. On the back end, here is the double tick app. This is how the solution looks like. So now in this case, if you look at this, this is a product which technically looks very similar to WhatsApp, but this is the WhatsApp app, the WhatsApp is, and right here, 
on the front end is my company's official verified green tick number but on the back end this number is used by so many people in my organization one whatsapp number used by so many people on mobile right so today if you have two people three people four people in your company you can basically do that secondly right from this product itself i have a capability that i can go inside the broadcast list and i can shoot the broadcast message to all my customers and when i do that when i create a broadcast list and when i send a message see you get a real time analysis first of all this message can go with the customer's name when you are shooting whatsapp broadcast with double tick app you can send a broadcast to let's say 1 lakh people in their own name within a click of a button that's possible secondly this message can have buttons interested in knowing more not interested things like that those buttons can have chatbots because you know why should you do all the all the uh, talking let the chatbot do all of it and then you get this real time analytics the message was sent to 2300 people delivered to 2100 people how many people read it how many people replied on it 38 people clicked on book a demo 17 people clicked on learn more things like that you know so the entire broadcast analytics comes to you live what do you think about it does this sound good to you make sense your business and uh, the gentleman was asking for the last session he was saying that you have got two lawyers you have not brought any mfd case for us to understand so fortunately for this case we have uh, mfd and also do we have the recording of that uh, gentleman uh, we, we we do have that recording right i will share one uh, feedback or the uh, testimony of one of another mfds who is using this platform he was so there yesterday we met he was him. there at the event as well so uh, with this and what we have done i will come on uh, that also so what i believe is uh, maybe we can share that testimonial quickly uh, video with that so that they know what is what is the real use case and how people are actually doing it i think maybe uh, should we show them the live uh, chatbot yeah. there's a there's a bot ah, we can do that that will okay. be so for everyone to experience the magic on their own right now i would request you to scan this qr code on your mobile phone live on your camera and then send a message on that number i mean the moment you scan this it will take you to whatsapp send whatever message is written on that number and i'll show you what happens uh what happens here see the moment we have people scanning that see harish has done that hari has done that uh, santil has done that and see automatically the moment uh, you want to go back and see that okay cool so imagine if you are taking a session online or offline and you want to record interest of your client the prospective client for your business unless you have to route the physical you know attendance sheet please fill your attendance sheet there is a stop button so immediately you will get all the inquiries with your in your database digitally so just try to do and see how you experience it so imagine you you take those offline events right uh, yeah. we call Invest, them investor awareness programs absolutely so you during an investor awareness program you can put such qr codes and you know what is happening on the back end let me show you what's happening you are scanning this qr code you are you are going to a whatsapp number the moment you are going to a whatsapp number see now mr uh, raghunath muthu can can you raise your hand yes he is right there he sent me a message automatically my chatbot got activated first this message went which is our brochure automatically to him secondly there is a sample message that went you can avoid that and then exciting news for marine wealth dear investor these are the products that we have you know so the chatbot got activated someone who has used the chatbot okay yeah durga mr durga okay how 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 do you think is the experience it's been perfect so mr durga came here there are two things that happened first of all i got his number without even asking for it i mean i got his name and number secondly right here using our automated chatbot the chatbot got activated and then now he selected out of all the options he selected fixed deposit 
So now view FDs, scheme details, and now our PDF file. So things like that. And did you see this tag? Automatically, his contact got tagged as AFM event. So this is all happening through automation, and these chatbots are something that we are giving as a solution to the MFD uh, industry. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. For me, I have said uh, when. Yeah, please. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. I mean, for that, basically, see, we are a new format of WhatsApp, right? So messaging on text, we can personalize things, but on video, then you will have to use some other AI to send that content to us, but we can automate it. OK, so I think that's a very interesting question. So what we can actually do is, first of all, I can auto tag leads basis who has, so let's say if someone has shown interest in mutual fund, the tag of mutual fund can be applied here. Then I can simply go here, apply filter and see what are the mutual fund leads. Let's say how, what are the 2 BHK interested leads. I get all the 2 BHK interested leads. You know, so like that, basically whenever a customer is engaging with your tag, uh, with your chatbot, a tag can be applied, a WhatsApp tag can be applied. And you can create a funnel. So I'll show you the entire funnel. We, you can actually create a funnel right here like this. Sorry? Yeah, that's a dummy bot. We are not in the space of selling mutual funds. I have just created <laughs> it for you. Yeah. Yes, uh, we are working on the transactional one. We have uh, initiated a tie-up with mutual fund utility already. I think some uh, Mr. Ganesh also said it yesterday also when we, he was there at the AFM event. So we are working on that uh, transactional part also. That will take some time, maybe a month or two months or so to come in. But we are already working on that as well. So that everything can happen through whatsapp api itself you don't have to this client do not have to travel down to any other third party app only the last page on the payment the shifting of the payment happen, but automatically that customer falls back to your whatsapp api and the confirmation message is that you have successfully invested through this and this sip folio numbers everything those things automatically will go from your whatsapp api to your client and imagine this WhatsApp API you're able to use on your mobile phone, just like your normal WhatsApp. So we also have a mobile app. So it's not that you have to be on your desktop. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing it on the mobile only. This is the mobile app. This is not mobile responsive. This is mobile app what we are offering. There's a difference. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. You can send automatic follow. So I'll, I'll show you something very interesting. OK, so now let's say this is a customer. Now this customer has come. Now, as a agent on the back end, I have this capability that first of all, I can assign this lead to some of my team members. So let's say I want to assign this lead to Brendan. So this chat is now assigned to Brendan. Brendan is sitting right there. Brendan can now talk to the customer on my behalf and I'll see who is talking with whom. That's point number one. So I get full funnel visibility. Previously, I was not knowing what Brendan is talking. Now I get to see everything. Does that make sense? So for people who have teams, at least that makes sense, right? So for example, even if you're two, right, you are out in the market, you're meeting clients, you have said something to your, uh, you know, uh, colleague in your office, but getting again and again, uh, the status of the job becomes difficult. Send a message to them, you have to just tell them, go to your mobile app, check that what is happening, has she or he send that message, what is the communication with the customer, wherever you are, you can easily check that. You can know that efficiency of your employee at the same time. So that's the quick you know, quickness and that particular employee also knows that my boss can anytime see. So what he has said, I have to do it right now. It cannot be that I'm waiting for things to happen. So the time efficiency or work efficiency also increases. Also, you get to check how many chats are unread. Let's say I want to look at all the unread chats that I have assigned to Brendan. So I can come here and I can simply apply his name filter and I get to see only one unread chat is there. Previously, I didn't know what's happening with Brendan, right? I mean, he's sitting in Mumbai, I'm, I'm here in Chennai. What is he doing on his WhatsApp? Ultimately, though, it's my business. I have to be the sole custodian of it. So, uh, okay, yeah. We have with Facebook. What kind of integration, technically? Someone told me that to do like this, we have to 
yeah, that's the implementation process. This gets activated via your Facebook account. So Which basically, I will talk about that implementation. Process. So basically, that's basically your uh, whole meta works with Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. These are yeah, the see, uh, we have from shared. Yeah. Sorry. Image. Yeah, you can send images, you can send videos, and you can send PDF of up to 100 MB, image of up to 5 MB, and video of up to 16 MB. You can port. It goes away. So, so one by one, sir. Yeah, one by one. You can take a backup in Excel, and then yeah, that's possible. I think that's a brilliant question. How do we look at data? Okay, so first of all, conversations are end-to-end uh, -end encrypted on WhatsApp by Meta. So that's one important point here from a data privacy perspective. Secondly, we are a uh, I mean, we are not a data company, right? I mean, we are taking money of the service that we give to you. So the point is that we are not in the data play. Your conversations and chats here at DoubleTech are also encrypted. And last but not the least, uh, we are also working with Indian Army. We are working with GRT. We are working with large global brands. So from a quality and compliance perspective, uh, your data is 100% safeguarded. Yes, I think that's a brilliant question. This all can get recorded on Google Sheet. Yeah. It, it's integrated with Google Sheet. Yeah. Correct. Perfect. Yeah. Calendly? 100% yes. We can integrate Calendly using Pabli. So what happens is, let's say if you are setting up a calendar reminder, or you are setting up a meeting at Calendly, it will send auto reminders to customer on WhatsApp. Let's say your meeting is on Monday. Now you are sending a you are sending a broadcast automated message on Saturday. Two days to go for the meeting. One day to go for the meeting, like that. Okay. Got it. Got it. If your CRM has open APIs available, we can integrate and we can pull the data and send it to the customer. No, not really. I mean, when you say system, like, is it a computer that you're talking about? Laptop. OK. I mean, so that, that date, on your server, it's there, right? So yeah, from there, definitely we can integrate it. But you must be using some software where you must be keeping it, right? But when you say server, like, where is it? What is the name of the CRM? Got it. So we can integrate with IFA now, and the data can be pulled from there and shoot it across to the customer. Secondly, if you want, the second thing that can be done here is that you can uh, uh, use Google Sheets for that. No, I mean, one is for all the basic CRM functionality. See, we have a CRM. Not contacted, DNP leads, callback. This is pure CRM that you see. So every lead that I have on double take, I have this capability that I can go and I can write the lead status. I can also put in the follow up date. You know, so all of that can be done here. And when I say automated follow up, it will do auto follow up at that time. You know, so things like that can be structured here. And right here, if I put the lead status, I also have that capability that I can change the lead status in Excel or in Google Sheet, it will send automated messages based the lead status. So this WhatsApp API is not just for you know broadcasting or sharing information. This is more like a virtual CRM at the WhatsApp also. Those all features we have integrated in the uh, uh, the WhatsApp API what we are offering uh, here today. So what you are asking uh, to that you know integration in all IFA now uh, that's po very much possible if the open API he said. Otherwise we have to touch base with the existing CRM. Second is we can create a chatbot for you, which is a customized chatbot, where you are looking that any new client coming in, uh, which whom you have fixed up a meeting, that certain report which has to go, that can go through a chatbot. So that we can build through a customized chatbot. So in this product, as a WhatsApp API, we have designed certain chatbot which are common across any and every mutual fund distributor we require. That will be part of this, uh, what do you call, the WhatsApp API. But right. then we, uh, where it requires a customization of certain uh, chatbots to be created, that again uh, we have a backend team here with what's, uh, with Double T. They will help you to create those uh, chatbots. Good part is. Uh,
uh, that will come on the later side when it talks on the feature side. Yeah. Sorry. Oh yes, oh yes. I think that's a very brilliant use case because what happens is a lot of time gets waste answering those questions one on one, right? Ah, uh, definitely yes, they can. They can. So the idea is uh, for dealing with that problem, what we have built is a solution which is the stop bot. So whenever you shoot a broadcast, I'll show you. Whenever you shoot a broadcast, there is a capability for you to have a button that says unsubscribe. Now the moment the customer clicks on that unsubscribe button, the customer gets auto opted out. He can, he can unsubscribe. So that is a very important uh, point here because let's say if you are shooting a broadcast to people who have engaged with you in the past but are now not your active customers. So you can send them a broadcast with a stop button and people can opt out and our automation is built as such. Let's say if I, if I click on the stop button here, I'll show you. If I click on the stop button then in the future the customer, even if we are sending a message to the customer, it won't get delivered. That's it. Sorry? It won't leave you any charges. Because your message will not get delivered. Yeah, 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 yeah. You will get that list of people who have unsubscribed. Sir, in case of unsubscription, it won't. But if people are blocking you, then yes. So why we are using this op? No, no. That. I think uh, Shivam, we have to answer it different way to them. See, what is happening is, uh, if you are using this, see, uh, one is you need to understand what are the right way of doing your WhatsApp marketing or WhatsApp, uh, using the right strategies for using the WhatsApp. So what he's trying to explain here is, uh, there is a proper strategy of using that. Once you become a partner, we'll explain that also, but just to answer that question. So uh, there are ways. So what he's saying is there will be a button below your message, like opt out or unsubscribe so what generally the uh, behavior of any individual is if like gentleman said if i don't want this unsolicited messages i will simply unsubscribe that's what you do with the normal emailers also which keep on their account you just unsubscribe right there are very rare cases which the person will go into a setting and then block to you that too again is not just what single customer did and your account will go out. There are many numbers and the regular behavior which WhatsApp determines based on their policy that whether this number is actually has to be blocked, what kind of activities you are doing. So since we know that we are using this for our business purposes, we normally would like to stick to the relevant messages, relevant uh, content, regular uh, you know, relevant uh, videos which are there relevant for the uh, customers. So there the chances of getting blocked is very, very uh, minimal in this. But even if it gets blocked, then since it's a, uh, we don't, uh, you know, say that to use a personal number there. So we use new number and then later, even if it gets blocked, we can again always use another number so that our business, the way it was going, it will keep on going. Because we have backend Excel and data already uploaded. So it's not that I have to save numbers or do all those issues again. So that's manageable. GST is mandatory for getting WhatsApp business. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. That's a meta compliance. I'll tell you the process. It needs, uh, yeah, there, there is a process for that. Okay, that's an interesting question. So let's say this is my primary number. This is my company's official number, which is QuickSell's verified number. Now on the back end, I want to add my team members here. So right here we have a team option in which I can get inside that option. Click on invite members, simply add my people. In fact, I, I can define them different roles. You know, people who are team executives, people who, are, people who are team leaders, I can define them different, different roles. And then I can track their conversations with my customers, like that. So it's very easy. So they are, yeah, they, they'll get added on the official number. That's true. Any other questions so far? Yes. Not really, not really. I mean, this bot is basically, I'll, I'll tell you, okay. So I'll, let's hop on to the desktop version. So this was the mobile version of the double tick app. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm simply going to take this opportunity to go on the desktop version. And right here on this desktop version, you would realize. 
so this is how the desktop version looks like all the conversations that we were doing on the mobile it is all coming here uh, and then right here you have this bot studio so there is a capability for you to build chatbots right uh, application programming interface but i mean uh, like that basically helps you integrate uh, one software to another okay. got it so yeah this is how it looks like yes uh, that is possible we will take that question offline also in detail that's With picture. Ah, uh, got it, got it. It it will be possible. It will be possible. It it will be possible. I'll have to understand the use case, but yes, it's possible. Yes, yes. You can you can send messages globally. Perfect. All right. So I think now with this, we we have a fair chance of uh, this thing. We, we we had a fair chance of looking at the solution. In fact, I would like to take another one minute to shoot a live broadcast to 3,000 people. I've got this data ready with me. There are 3,000 leads, and uh, you know these leads are in Excel. Exactly 3,000 is the count. I've uploaded that data on the Double Tick app, and I've built a chat bot on it. Uh, this is how the bot looks like. The customer comes, and then uh, you know there's this entire bot flow that we have built. Now what I'm going to do is I'll simply shoot a live broadcast to 3,000 people, Abhi. So this is the data of 3,000 people. I'm going to click on send message. There is a template which is registered. It has three buttons. And here you go. I'm just going to map it right here. I can schedule the broadcast for a later stage, and all those things can be done as well. But right here. Live, this broadcast will go to 3,000 people. And you can see that uh, the numbers have already started moving on your screen. This is a live broadcast going right now to 3,000 people. This is how it goes live. Do you see that 12 people have already replied to my message, 5 people have read it, 356 people the message is already sent to. As we speak, it has already crossed 400. No, no. You will only be charged for the message that are sent. There is a reason for that. I'll, I'll show you the reason. Typically, when customers have already opted out or they are not on WhatsApp, is the primary reason. How many of you are currently using SMS and emailer services? See, you see this stop button. This is the op. Show you what the customer. Sorry, yeah. So, how many of you are currently using SMS services or uh, emailer services from the third party? One. So, you do you guys use uh, bulk SMS to send for your customers? No, not even emailers. We don't do that. Yes, please. Okay, SMS. He does. And what about you, sir? Emails. And what's the response rate for that normally? Sorry? Acha just started. What about you for the SMS? Zero response. Do you see that there are already two demos booked live here? Let me show you what actually happened. So we sent this broadcast. It has already gone to 1500 people. Now if I click on book demo, I will in real time get to know what are the people out of these 3000 people who have booked a demo. And then automatically these leads are getting assigned to my sales team. and now, rather than talking to all the customers, my sales team is only talking to these people. So, Durgesh Tiwari is the customer who has booked a demo. See, this is what happened. This message is sent to Durgesh in his name. Hi, Durgesh. This message is sent at what time? Right now, 1.50 p.m. He clicked on book a demo. This conversation got assigned to Azim. And automatically, a message from our side went, which says, thank you for showing interest, Durgesh. To book a one-on-one -on -one session, here is the link. So Calendly is there, if, if, since you are asking, so Calendly is already linked there. Yeah, we have integrated Calendly, of course. So the point is that, imagine the kind of efficiency increase. 
If I was to call these 3,000 people, it would take me 90 days. I'm not even kidding. One person does about three hours of calling in a day, and one call takes about five minutes. That technically means it would take you, considering that one call is a five minute, because India has 50% call pickup ratio, it will actually take you 90 days to call 3,000 people. I've done that in nine minutes in front of you. The message is actually sent to See, the stats are in front of you. There are five demos booked. And now this data is flowing into a real-time Google Sheet, where my sales rep is also uh, getting mapped. Right? I have an ability, I can export this data and I click off a button. So there is one international, I think, I don't know which country, but again, one international number is... Yeah, there is, a, there is an international number also. What do you think of it? So Imagine so much can happen on WhatsApp. So I can understand why you are not using probably the SMS as a service because of the uh, text limitation. Because always you have to draft a very, very small text limitation and uh, you, have to, you have so much to tell, right? So one is uh, that. Second is people have stopped responding to the SMSs and the emailers. They are on the WhatsApp. So these one, two big problems which we face with the SMS and emailers are well taken care with the WhatsApp API. So you can have a video, text and everything with no limit. It's always better to give a short messages, but still that 160, 180 word is always lesser to explain your point. So that's where the WhatsApp API again becomes very important. Fair enough. Perfect. Now I think we should immediately hop on to the yeah. pricing and the plans. Cool. So everyone, basically, there are two type of things. Uh, one is that WhatsApp or Meta has defined three different type of conversations and they charge separately for those three type of conversations. So please hear this out clearly. First is the marketing conversation. This is all sales and marketing related messages that you basically send comes under marketing conversation. Second is your utility conversation, which are non sales and non marketing related messages like transaction messages, updates, reminders. These are all utility messages. And the third is service message that technically means you didn't send a message, the customer sent you a message upfrontly, rather than you sending them a message. So now the cost in this case basically works in a very different way. WhatsApp says that we are not going to charge you per message. Please be informed there is no per message cost. There is no per message cost. WhatsApp says that we are going to charge you per customer for a 24 hour window. That technically means that if I am shooting a message to 1000 people right now and it is a marketing message, then I am being charged 82 paisa per customer for a window of 24 hours. So that technically means 1000 multiplied by 82 paisa comes down to 820 rupee. So WhatsApp is saying that we will charge you 820 rupee for a window of 24 hours for those 1000 customers. So that means if I am sending a message at 2 o'clock today, Till tomorrow 2 o'clock, I have a capability of sending unlimited messages or doing unlimited chatting with these 1000 customers. It's not a per message charge, it's a 24 hour window charge, which is 82 paisa for marketing conversations and 35 paisa for utility conversation. This is the conversation cost. Utilities, transactions and uh, Reminders, transaction, basically non-sales and non-marketing messages are considered as utility messages. All the sales and marketing messages are considered as marketing messages. So, and this charge is for India. If you are shooting messages to outside India, the charge will vary country on country, which is given on our website. But what I'm trying to tell you is marketing is 82 paisa, utility is 35 paisa. Utility also available on Yeah, utility is also available on chatbot. Correct. That's correct. So this is there and the third type of conversation we discussed is service conversation. Now service conversation is interesting. This is when the customer sends you a message. You have not sent a customer a message. Customer has sent you a message, but you are replying. So what we are saying is customer is sending you a message. Then in that case, when you reply, it will cost you 35 paisa and then a 24 hour window will get activated. Now this charge, it has two benefits. Benefit number one, in case of service conversation, you get 1000 free conversations in a month. You get 1000 free conversations every month. That technically means if you have 
30 customers messaging you in a day and there are 30 days in a month, 30 into 30 equals to 900. We are saying WhatsApp gives 1000 free conversation and on top of 1000 free conversation, your message will only be charged provided you reply to them. So let's, absolutely. So let's say if I send you a good morning today morning, now until and unless you don't reply, you will not be charged. You will only be charged probably when you reply and that too once your 1000 free conversations are consumed. Sorry? Per month. Per month. No, 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 wait, wait. Thousand free conversation for service conversations only. No, no, marketing and utility is going to be free. It's a, it's a term defined by WhatsApp basically. It's a global term. Oh, yes, that's a very beautiful question. So, Right here on the double tick app, see out of the broadcast we have sent, we have already got 14 people interested. That is the power. Right here I am taking a session with you on learning and right here on the other end, people are giving us business. Cool. So coming here, when you upload a template on WhatsApp, when you create a message on WhatsApp, it basically asks you what is the category. Is it a marketing category or is it a utility category? Now you will come back and say I will write a marketing message under utility. So Meta has AI. Using AI they detect. If you say that this is a utility message versus a marketing message, they will charge you for marketing. <laughs> so, so if I am sending the marketing message, they don't block you? Right? No, no, they, they don't block you. Yes. Correct. Yeah, that's owned by us. I mean, that's correct. The moment you click it, you will have to pay 24,000 because there is a part of it that goes to Meta and without that, we can't activate it. So the point is that WhatsApp business API. Plus GST or Let me come there. I'm, I'm coming there. I'm coming there. First, this is actually rather than the subscription cost, this is an important topic because conversation cost needs to be clear. Okay. Any questions on the conversation cost? Marketing, utility and service. Yeah, GST is extra and right here you get an ability that you can do a recharge right here on double tick app we have given you a recharge option you can do a recharge of as low as one rupee also you get a gst invoice and there is no limitation on that you have to do a bare minimum recharge or something so that's there apart from this uh, coming back if at all there is any question on the conversation cost of course brandon is going to be there on our desk uh, right outside we have a booth so you can go there and get consulted on that uh, apart from that very interesting another point if you are running ads on Instagram and Facebook, please, please, you know, pay full attention. It's important. If you are running Instagram and Facebook ad, then there is no conversation cost because Meta says that if you are running ad on Facebook and Instagram, you can bring leads to WhatsApp. You can run to WhatsApp ads and there will be no conversation cost for 72 hours. It's going to be free. So in this case, ideally service conversation was supposed to be applied, but it's not applying because it's free. Unlimited. You can bring unlimited customers from Instagram and Facebook to WhatsApp and there will, no, there will not be any charge. After that, uh, of course, so after 72 hour window, then normal conversation rate will apply. For the first lead coming, so basically see, there's this technology called click to WhatsApp ad on Instagram and Facebook. What happens there is if you're running an ad on Insta, which says you look at the ad and you click on it, it takes you to WhatsApp. So this is CTWA ads. So whenever a new lead is coming on WhatsApp from your Instagram and Facebook, 72 hour window is there, which is free. Fair enough? Cool. Now I think with all of the conversation cost happening and stuff like that, I have one single question for all of you all. Do you want to implement WhatsApp business API and all these strategies in your business? Yes or no? How many people do you want to implement? Please raise hand and I see a lot of hands coming out there and uh, by the my way, friends. Yeah. By yes. the way, AFM has already bought double tick and we are using that. <laughs> yes, of course, AFM and is one of our And we have paid it, we have not got it for free from them. <laughs> <laughs> got it. So, uh, my friends, the reason I was asking this question is because Buying a software and getting to use a software are two different subject matters. It's like buying a car. 
you buy a car not necessarily the day you buy a car you know how to ride it you have to learn it separately correct so the point that i'm trying to make is that uh, and this happens with all the it's right we buy them and we don't use it and the money goes down the drain the money goes waste so remember at uh, two uh, i mean when we started this conversation i told you about my mission wherein i clearly said that my mission is to help small and medium businesses implement technology implement easy to use technology and that is the reason we have partnered with afm and uh, here is how we are going to help you implement whatsapp business api we are going to give you a dedicated team of whatsapp experts that will work with you in implementing whatsapp business api in your business right from helping to implement then consulting you now first of all let me be very clear and upfront implementing whatsapp business api in business is not easy why is it not easy because sitting in the headquarters in the united states whatsapp has built processes that are similar for all type of businesses i mean imagine tata lines also has done the same process that you have to go through to activate whatsapp business api so you will definitely need some expert help so i'll tell you the procedure of getting started and i'll tell you how are we going to help first of all for you to get started using whatsapp business api you have to get a facebook page now if you have a facebook page well and good if you don't have one our whatsapp experts will help you with that secondly you mandatorily need to get your facebook business manager verification done now what is this facebook business manager verification there is a verification that happens on facebook about your business that for you to use whatsapp business api how will you do that you need a gst certificate or a msme certificate or a current bank account statement or a utility bill of your business any two documentations out of the four that i have listed needs to be uploaded on meta and that is how your facebook business manager verification will get done apart from that you actually need a website before if you don't have a website you don't get to activate whatsapp business api so one i mean we will help you do the facebook business manager where if you have a website if at all there are certain changes needed in the website we will help you with those changes if at all you do not have a website we have a functionality wherein we will help you build a website also so that you don't get stuck then how do i get a green tick on my whatsapp is there any guidance on that so my friends you do not get a green tick on whatsapp on day one there is a process for that first of all you need to get your facebook business manager verification done after that you can apply for a green tick we will apply for a green tick on your behalf you don't have to do that you just need to give us three press release links of your business meta has a requirement for you to get a green tick you should have your facebook business manager verification done and you should have three press releases about your business online on some uh, websites like let's say uh, times of india or any other uh, you know any other online news agency kind of a thing now if you do not have these pr links which i am assuming is not there in most of the businesses cases you don't have to worry about it we have a partner that can help us do green tick verification also but necessarily in my view not every business needs a green tick now in in this case if you have to look at the other example the prime uh, uh, the prime investment example also even without green tick your company name was visible let's say you are shooting a broadcast to 1 lakh people even when you don't have a green tick your company name will be visible green tick is just an added benefit on top of it so this is the uh, this is the thing and then apart from that we have training sessions wherein our whatsapp experts will basically train you on all the things how to upload your customers on double take how to set up different different customer segments for relevant broadcasting The, this is going to be on zoom we have videos we have super comprehensive videos we have zoom live zoom meetings happening every day every day we have a schedule we have recorded videos and then we have 2 to 3 3 minute small small videos also and then apart from that we are going to do growth sessions with afm every month we are going to have a session of all the community members who are subscribing to double take via afm we are going to have a session for them on how can we help you use uh, whatsapp business api better what are the other strategies because we talk to a lot of businesses so every time we have something new that we would like to come back and tell you right so that's the thing then our whatsapp expert will help you on how to send personalized broadcast using google sheet using mobile 
how to map your sales person to your existing customers, how to set up chatbots, customer journeys, automated uh, lead qualification bots, lead nurturing bots and everything. And this is the entire consultation that will happen. Apart from this, as uh, the gentleman rightly said, right here, we have videos for everything. Every single thing has a video of 2 to 3, 3 minutes. Apart from that, we have live sessions also. So let's say on Monday, there is a on Tuesday, there is a session on chatbot. On Wednesday, there is a session on broadcasting. And then there are these recorded videos also. So there's a lot which is there. And along with this, now we have two dedicated plans that we are offering for the AFM community out here. Uh, considering the special needs of the of the industry, one is the double tick starter plan and second is the double tick pro plan. Now for all the businesses that are one man show kind of a business, I would recommend you to go with the light plan which is the starter plan. In this, you get to use double tick on mobile and desktop. It is priced, okay I'll talk about the price but first you get to use one single WhatsApp number on five agents. You get green tick assistance, you get bulk broadcasting, you get unlimited customer segmentations. So you can build unlimited segments for broadcasting. You get detailed broadcast analytics, import export of Excel, Google Sheet integration because most of your business runs on Google Sheet. You don't use CRM, you use Google Sheet. You get to use double tick on mobile and desktop. Unlimited tax and unlimited customer attributes. Basically whatever you need on a lower level to run your business to an extent can be done in the basic starter plan. Now if you have, if you have a decent sizable company in that case, you should subscribe to the double tick pro plan in which you get everything that is there in the starter plan plus you get one numbered agents, you get ability to define different customer, different roles of different people in your organization, custom roles and all of that. You can get customer number masking, third party integrations, developer APIs, agent and organizational analytics, reports and four ready-made chatbots for MFDs. I basically exposed to you uh, in case of Pragnesh Desai, those chatbots, chatbots that you were playing with. You get ready-made chatbots, one month key account manager in which our WhatsApp expert will create a group with you on WhatsApp. I will also be there, Vyasji will also be there in that group and we will handhold you personally. Basic, basically the point is that VIP dedicated direct line support. You don't have to call our support number, you don't have to email us, you can directly call your dedicated WhatsApp expert, relationship manager, direct. Customer number masking means on the back end, your agents or your team will not get to see customer's number so that it doesn't get stolen under this plan. Any questions here so far? Any questions? Yes. Pricing. Okay. So the pricing is basically for the starter plan, it comes at 35,000 plus GST for implementation consultation and starter plan. At 24,000 plus GST, the total comes down to 59. And for the pro plan, it is 35,000 plus 42,000 for uh, double tick pro plan, plus the chatbots, which is basically 23,000 rupee. So the total comes down to 1 lakh plus GST. Now, for all the AFM members and for all the dignitaries uh, associated with us here, uh, with a lot of negotiations that I've done with Mr. Vyas. <laughs> over a period of time he's a great negotiator here is a special plan that we have launched for all of y'all and the plan is you get the starter plan at a flat price of 24,000 plus GST there is no additional cost of the advanced implementation and consultation no additional cost of direct AFM uh, X double tick uh, sessions and all of that and for the pro plan, it is going to cost you 42,000 plus GST in which you get everything that we have discussed at that price point. So two plans, 24,000 for the basic one and 42,000 for the advanced one. Where sir? Single lead, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So in starter also we will give you one chatbot. Only one. Only one for you to have some automation. 
Now when your business becomes a little bigger and you feel no, now I need more advanced chatbots. Now I need more enablement. Then you can pivot from this plan to this plan. That is also possible. See the idea here is to actually help you. It's a yearly subscription. Yearly one time fee you can call it. Renewal same, same, same. Re oh yes, that's a very important. Will the renewal happen at 1 lakh rupee or will it happen at 42,000 rupees? So my friends, Mr. Vyas has already taken care of that. So he has got a deal from us that for the next two years, the renewal happens at the same price. 42, 42, 42. Single bot, single lead qualification bot. Like how, how you scanned that QR code right now and there was a bot that came, right? A bot like that. Only one bot. Sir, on a monthly basis, see, Meta, I, I think that's a very interesting question. How much to spend in conversation cost? Sir, it is going to be so expensive for us. If I spend 10,000 rupee per month, it will be like 20,000 rupee a year. So, my friends, the point behind that is, first, spend only 2,000 rupee in conversation cost and figure out what is the amount of business you are able to make out of it. See, increase in conversation cost is a function of increase in revenue. You will only put in 1 lakh rupee for a month as a conversation cost when you are able to make 1 crore out of it. Until and unless you are not able to get there, you will not do that. So, the point is that first you put in little money, figure out what is the ROI you are getting. If you are getting good ROI, put more money. If at all you are running Instagram and Facebook ads, of course that is going to be separate. For that 72 hours, I cannot pay this Yeah, in that case, conversation cost will not apply. For that 72 hours, that's true. Yes, sir, please. Total cost, sir, basic plan 24,000 and GST 18%. 18%. It includes all those things. There is no additional cost attached to it. See, normally what happens, I tell you what, there could be other platforms. Number one is you will not get the customized. What AFM does has done in this is we have got the customized bots ready for you See, all this into the system because we don't expect you to make that bots for you. So that is number one. Number two is uh, if you go to any third party other uh, who are offering WhatsApp API to you, you will find one uh, difficulty, there are a lot of hidden cost attached to it. For example, every time when you keep on making the new bots, you, you are being charged to it. The hand-holding again is one feature. I told you boss, our MFDs are not tech savvy, assume that and then I need a 24 hour 7 hand-holding from them. And that's how what they have agreed, you will get a dedicated relationship manager, you just call them, there is an issue that I don't understand, you need to create this WhatsApp API and that's how we have kept the growth sessions. Uh, idea is that whatever the strategy is, right strategy is there, every month we meet for one hour and we talk on those strategies with you. So that's how the hand holding and the business generation is going to happen. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Without GST, are there Without GST? You don't have a GST? Okay. If you don't have a GST, then you can use uh, MSME and you can use uh, current bank account statement. For getting the account. For getting the account. So either GST or either MSME certificate. Yourself. Yeah, I mean typically, see, if GST is there, then nothing like it. But if you don't have GST, then you can use MSME certificate or current bank account statement or utility bill of your business. So it is simple, uh, GST will pay. <laughs> I mean, actually, mo be rather important topic here is that without that, your account doesn't get activated. <laughs> We don't so even we able, we are not able to start only. Yeah. See, I mean green tick has got nothing with the num the amount of money uh, that you spend. Typically, green tick is a function of having three press releases or if you don't have them, then it takes about average 50 to 60,000 rupee one time cost to get a press release done and then against that you will get a green tick. All of that is, that is achievable, that is, I mean. So, as we have shown that. 
thousand thousand customers. That's it. So I mean, that's not a concern basically. So we have shown you the example of that prime investment also. That's not a green tick number, but they are using this and they have grown their business quarterly on quarterly basis. We have shown that growth chart. So it, it that's not stopping us in the existing business model. Green tick is good to have. So it's like getting your will registered is good to have. Similarly, is green tick is good to have in this our existing business. Not having a green tick is not a problem at all. Now for all the businesses out there who are interested, Brendan is right there outside. We all you have to do is pay two thousand rupee as a token to register for the program at these impeccable jaw dropping prices. So please make the best out of it. You have the EMI options and something available. We have EMI options using credit cards. Okay. Yeah, using credit cards we have EMI option. Two uh, thousand you can block right now. That's it. Just just pay two thousand rupee out there on our booth. You have any questions, any queries, any concerns? Please visit the booth and the best out. No, no, no. You can port the same number. It's possible. That was an everything one. Conversation. We can give you a backup. So that backup is there. Conversation and all data is yours. The tech is ours. <laughs> Simple as <laughs> that. Exactly. <laughs> right. Any other question? Friends, please. So basically, see, on the front end, it is a single number. Now, back end, four people are using it. So, four people be using that main front end number only. It's just that for them to get access. So, for that, we have an enterprise version wherein five different people can have five different numbers. And Right. You may like to have more bots with you. Now you go to any other platform; they will charge you five thousand, ten thousand per bot to be created for that. We are not going to charge you for that. That we have already taken uh, their consent on that. For any additional bots, whatever we create, we will not charge. But obviously, that has to come from your side. That this is our requirement. They at the tech at the back end, they will develop it for you. So. so yeah, basic for one basic chat, one, one chat basic lead do. qualification chatbot will be given. Then four chatbots related to MFD business will be there in the uh, pro plan. Advanced version. Not really, not really. We don't have any kind of limitation. But API access there on is there on the pro plan. That is fine. Yeah. What kind of limitations? I don't think there's a limit on that. I'll still check with our CDO, but I don't see a limit. What if you want to change the brand name? The double tick you're saying? Your brand name? You can change that. There's a process for that. I mean, you basically for that. I mean, are you are you only changing the brand name, or are you changing the GST and everything, or the legal? So there, there are two are things. See, <coughs> see, there are two things. Sir, uh, one is a brand name. Uh, I have a AFM as a company. My brand name can be X Y Z, which I am promoting in the market. So, for example, you go to any retail shop in the world. Uh, when you do a billing, you will get a message from X Y Z company. You are standing at Lifestyle, right? So that's the brand name is Lifestyle. But your company name with the GST etc. registration is on that particular where the payment has gone. That's the bank account name basically. So same is the case for you. If you're looking for a brand name change, uh, that is always possible. When it comes to the change in the name of the company, then you have to follow the complete legal process, submit those documentation, and then that gets changed automatically. But normally, when you develop a brand, you don't change your brand name so easily. Because again, you have to, you know, start back from where we started. Now, for people who are interested, they can scan this QR code, and uh, our team will also get in touch. And apart from that, of course, you can simply go outside, talk to Brendan, and I'm also going to be there. So, any questions you have, you can simply get them answered. Yeah. No, 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 sir. Charges for green tick is like for PR. It's a one-time charge. 
depends upon what kind of PR you uh, need. That we will help because we are also recently working on that one. So it's uh, like typically it will cost you 50, 60,000 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on that at the back end. It should be, see, Meta has not defined those things. You know, it's not very clear. Yeah. It's just that we, uh, but, but the idea is that uh, still uh, some decent media coverage is will work. I mean, it shouldn't seem like it's paid. That's the idea, right? So, see, everything in media right now. Uh, there are a lot of things they, they're charging and getting done. So Correct. by even paying 25,000 rupees, you can get up to uh, two articles, I'm sure you will get it. Three articles, maybe if we negotiate well, we are able to get three articles also. In diff good magazines like Midday, then Times of India, Outlook, all these good branded, I'm saying. For regional, the charges are very less, like 5,000 per article. So, so those things are manageable. We are still working on that uh, piece, uh, you know, how to get that thing uh, done. Because I know that could be one additional cost for anyone who has to incur. But we are working but on that. But I think that. green tick, I mean, because but we are green tick, you don't need green tick actually. Like, it's not something that we typically… But if you are looking, we are working on that for the, yeah. to bring that costing again uh, down from that perspective as well. Correct. Cool. I think uh, you guys can, you know, go with your lunch. We, we don't want to be as an interruption to your lunch. <laughs> Already we have taken a lot of but, time. But I yours. hope this session I was… Thank you so much. Thank you. So that was the idea of know your program and grow your program. Uh, we have a feedback form uh, also. I think a lot of people already gone. I missed to uh, mention. Just uh, uh, fill that feedback form. We will also understand what is your thought process, number one. Number two, you also get a certificate from AFM for this know your pro, uh, business and grow your business as a certificate, digital certificate. You can download it from there. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you out there at the stall. Thank you, thank you so much.